the pop out chat. Hello everyone, we are live on the interwebs, on the webs of the internet, the internet of webs. Hi everyone, hi. Tell us if you can hear me. Is this is where we talk drivel now, is it? Yes, this is where yeah. we talk. Yeah, it's like when you bung things in the microwave. -y. In the mic. Uh, I'm just getting the chatties up. Yeah, it's working. Let's just make sure that's working. Hello, chatties. There we go. Look at that. That is pretty cool. Now it's time to say something crude and rude. No, bad luck. Missed. Okay. We have interwebs, loud and clear, says Sasquatch. Good, good, good. Um, now, I didn't really set a topic this week, and I was kind of weighing up whether I should do a topic or not, and I've decided to go with it. So you'll probably find out either because you've seen the thumbnail because I've changed it already, or you might just have to wait in for 15 minutes when I actually start the show and show you the graphic. But there is actually a topic this week and it might be something that you hate or it might be something that you like. Depends on which way you roll. It can be divisive, this topic. Don't you reckon any without mentioning it? <laughs> there, I didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. You're about to explode then. <laughs> <laughs> What's divisive about it? Oh, I don't know. I just think some people oh, like do you mean, it. Some people hate it. Do you, you mean that? Uh... Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to not mention it's it, isn't it? Gonna be, it's going to be hard work today, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be bloody hard work today. Does it, does it mean the title of the track or uh, the, the title of the show or the actual? Um, well, the title of the show is already based out, on. so you should already should have already worked it out. The title of the show is yeah, already yeah. on on there, so we pretty much have given it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's had Saturday sonority all week, and now it's different. Now it's different. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What so is this? all prepared for some sonority, and then all of a sudden, boom. what is this skullduggery? Hey, this unpreparedness. Skullduggery. The unpreparedness. Um, it's good to see a couple of people joining up already. We've got a small but awesome group of chatties, and they seem to be building. Um, do you believe though that a lot of people turn up at at uh, two o'clock. So it's hard for me to say that because it's actually nine o'clock here. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm in a pretend time zone. It's actually nine o'clock where I am, but really, where the majority of the people are that watch it, it's two o'clock. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's been an interesting week for news. There's going to be a really kind of how do I say it? Kind of uh, different type of angle on the news this week. Normally we show a little bit of hardware, which we'll still do, uh, but there's going to be some topics this week that might be of interest to everyone um, and some mm -hmm. opinions. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sasquatch has already worked out what the topic is. Good, good, good. <laughs> good. All right, so now Sasquatch has leaked that idea. I'm not going to say it until the start of the show anyway, but you guys can get yourselves ready for some thoughts. Get your brains into that sort of into that sort of side of the world, that'll help you. Right. Um, so yeah, and oh, why is that not working down below? Oh, I know why. Because I haven't put it in there. It's just a black square, Andy. That could be a bit uh, guest. Is uh... Is, is Dean joining us or somebody no. else? Or is it just, heard, just us going? Haven't heard from Dean. There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, I haven't seen Dean. I haven't heard from him. So um, mind you, I haven't actually reached out to him either. So not on purpose either. Um, just life happens. Weeks go quickly, yeah, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Don't, don't you agree? Like one minute you're here and the next minute you're here again. It's like, the, and the wig has well, I, somehow inserted itself yeah. in between. <laughs> it's been a crackers week this week. Oh. We've, we've got, got a good tale to tell about that one. We've got a bit more COVID happening here as of today, actually. So we had lock. you guys remember we had lockdown last week. Mm. When I actually did the show, we were actually in lockdown. 
And then they released the lockdown and we we're all running around with masks on. Uh, I felt like I was Batman. And um, well, we still are. We still got to wear masks whenever then, we go into into somewhere. And then they found another couple of cases. So we are just running around with masks on still. So yeah. How many is a couple? Uh, I think that, that we've always got cases uh, which are like international travellers going into quarantine. So there's always, you know, a steady three or four, you know, two or three or whatever it is a day that come in that get that mm. have COVID. But when I'm saying <laughs> cases, I'm, I'm talking about community cases that have actually got into the community. So they take mm. it a bit more seriously here when they get them in the community. So, uh, yeah, at the moment, there's three community cases active. Is that all? That's all. I mean, I mean, ser seriously, uh, that, I mean, that's like, oof. That's a dream negligible. for some country. I mean, seriously, negligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, yeah, you've just got to be glad that your, your government saw it. I mean, it looks like we are coming out. I mean, I, I don't think it'll ever properly go away. I mean, it's sort of, it's going to be, I think, a bit like the, the flu virus or a common cold, really. It'll, it'll be around. But given that most adults now of well at least adults above sort of 45 and now 40 to 45 you know once that vaccine's been rolled out ooh, you know i think that then then we can have something resembling normality because we still haven't got back yet i mean i know they've opened up pubs but mm. i went to a pub uh, in the week and was standing outside in the freezing cold really not enjoying myself at all i thought i'd rather not be doing this mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah. i've got to stand outside a pub and yeah, you know, it's okay for me to stand in front of a, a, a room full of 32, 33 kids, you know. That's perfectly okay, you see. That's all right. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a, you know. so in my in my city, <coughs> tomorrow there's a, a big football game on where there's probably going to be about 45,000 people going to a stadium. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, contradiction much. The, the interesting thing that's happened, though, with this particular case yeah. is that it's a security guard that works in a quarantine hotel that's picked it up and he's had his yeah. first Pfizer injection already. So he's in between the first and the second. So he's actually been inoculated. Yeah. And that is a bit of a head scratcher as far as I'm concerned because I actually don't really know, do you need the two to be fully protected? Is it yeah. or <coughs> yeah. it's, well, it's the, kind of a weird one. The, the, the same here. So go on, Aaron. No, oh, no, I was got, probably going to say the same as you. The, the thing is, they, they reckon it's something like, is it 60% um, off your first one? Uh, and then it gets up to the full. Well, it's not 100%, is it? it's about 90%, I think, for the Pfizer. 95, yeah. Um, after the second one. Yeah. But, yeah, but it takes three weeks after the second one anyway. Yep. So you can still catch it. And, and even then you can still catch it, even if you've been inoculated both times. So Yeah. Still yeah, you can still get chance. it, but it, it stops you becoming. They, they say it stops you becoming seriously ill, and it's reduced the risk yeah. of dying down to almost zero. So you you know, that, and also that there was a statistic this week that was saying that it also means it's far harder to transmit it because the actual virus load in your body is much lower because of the inoculation and weaker as well, which seems like it. Mm. yeah. So. Yeah, well, but anyway, I think it's right that, that you're being as your you, you that your lovely government and the people that run your country are being as cautious as they as they can be. I, I, uh, I, do, I like it whilst, too, but while still allowing football games to take place, because let's be honest, the world has to stop for yeah. football, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, I just want to come back in life as a footballer <laughs> because obviously they're completely immune. Hey, to they're, having a, COVID. they're having a rave in Liverpool last <laughs> night. Yeah, the, yeah, but again. That I, th I, I thought, good, I like this idea, get it all going again. Let Try these experimental things, and if it comes back that there's no discernible risk or mm. there's you know nothing's happened, then then things can start happening again. We'll be able to have, you know, hopefully festivals in the summer or, yeah. you know, synthfest mm. in October, that, that sort of thing. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, there's going to come a point at some point, surely, that you, it's going to be constantly constantly coming out, like, like you said, like the flu. And you can't lock down every time it, it comes out. There's going to be another pandemic at some point. And is this going to be the, like, the exactly. new rule? You lock yeah. down every time we get... We, you, we're never going to be out of lockdown otherwise. It's stupid. So I, I don't get it. Why can't we just have these things like Synthfest and just r walk around with masks and hand sanitise and, you know, just do the things that we 
have kind of now gotten used to doing over the last year or so. And I think, you know, <laughs> that's going to be, that's probably going to be the way of the future for a while until, you know, the people that wear the white coats can work out something better than what they've got so far. But I think, yeah, my, I mean, where I am, I'm, I'm grateful, don't, don't get me wrong, but I think the lockdown is not a sustainable thing. The quarantine is not a sustainable thing. Uh, they, they have to go, they have to go to the next step. And we, I was talking about this last week, we, we've only got something like 19,000 people vaccinated here in my city and there's over 2 million people, 2.5 million mm. people here, which is pretty shocking. So they need to get off their ass. And I think um, whilst they've, they've earned themselves a really good name for being really good at keeping COVID out here where I am, that's soon going to bite them on the ass because they're so chasing their tail at the moment with this vaccine. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Businesses you, you've are kept suffering. it out, which is great, but you can't open up until you've vaccinated can you yeah. so you're, you're i mean we might have gone the wrong way but with 34 35 million people vaccinated yeah and 15 million double vaccinated at least when we open up there's not much more you can do than be double vaccinated yeah so the good news is they're, they're saying that, yeah. they're saying that they've stepped it up so we'll see um i mean when i get it will be an indication of how much they've stepped it up because i'm just under the cutoff uh for the you know the senior type people to get it because it's fifty. Yeah, young whippersnapper. Yeah, yeah, so I'm still young. So anyone over fifty can get it now, but because I'm under fifty, um, I won't get it until the next stage or the next phase or whatever they call it. So we'll see. And um, you know that's probably the that's probably the the population generous that is the more likely to you know to give COVID to someone is that sort of twenty to twenty to fifty sort of belt of people, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Well, that just used up a bit of time. Well, can't think beyond the end <laughs> of their own noses, COVID. some of them. Yeah. Anyway, why don't, we, uh, why don't we do this? This is a bit more fun. Um, I've, I've still got some of these Albies left. Um, the crisp lager. Very crisp. Um, no, it doesn't taste like a packet of crisps. Sorry. Are we going for sponsorship runs or what? Well, obviously, the Albie, you can leave the money on the fridge. Uh, Gage Roads <laughs> Brewing Company. Yes. The new Albion. Cheers. <laughs> Not bad. It tastes lagerish. It tastes rather like a lager. Um, gentlemen, what well, are the? I'm on one are, of my faves. Okay, let's let's just get a close we'll up of this. Them. Uh, what are my faves? I love this one. Yeah, good punk IPA. Yep. Yeah, it's American, but I will forgive it. <laughs> and, <laughs> Sorry to our American friends. And, yeah, and it's, it's lovely. I mean, America. There's some really, there's some really good, you know, ales coming out of America. I, actually, yeah. I'm not even on alcohol. I'm not even on alcohol. Well, I'm on flipping. That's because you're Ben Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they from like Bolton? Are they from from Bolton or somewhere like that? Bolton. I think they walk down because it tastes Rock, nothing like Rochdale. <laughs> yeah. It just tastes like water. I tell you what, Darren. I was going to get a can of Dr Pepper. And have a can of Dr Pepper tonight because I haven't had one for years. Have you guys had Dr Pepper before? Some some people with yeah, I'm not a fan of it. They they reckon it tastes like cough <laughs> medicine, right? People that I actually don't think it tastes anything like cough medicine, but some people who don't like it have said that it tastes like cough medicine. So because it's got a kind of a cherry cough medicine flavour to it. Anyway, we should probably get on with the show instead of talking about COVID and beer and soft drink and. It's got nothing to do with synthesizers. What the hell is this stupid show about? Like everyone's just raging at us right now in chat. <laughs> no, they're not actually. They they're all following along nicely. They're all good. They're all good people. Look at that. See? You're right, Wagyu. It says it on the label if you read it closely enough. It says Brood and Ellen. Learn to read, Andy. So he's just said it's not American, it's Scottish. <laughs> I don't mind. Wagyu's mentioned eating pies. It's American. I actually, American I don't hops. mind. I do not mind the odd pie. And a bit of a pie and a bit of a bit of sauce and a beer. It's not bad at all. Yeah, and Sasquatch has just pointed it out to me as well. Sorry, I'm an arse. Yeah, okay. Read the label, it's easy. Well, it's not I it's should right sight, it's like mine. I need glasses, I can't see it. <laughs> Bert says Dr. Pepper was toilet <laughs> toilet cleaner. <laughs> I don't know if I mean, yeah, you've got a weird. The, it was you've got some weird it. taste experiences there, matey. Does <laughs> <laughs> that mean it's trying to toilet cleaner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're saying. Ah, <laughs> uh, dearie <laughs> me! All it's right, got a hole in his tongue there. 
I think we should release the topic. Let's release the topic. Here it goes. Yes, we are going to be doing Star Wars. Here we go. Why not just hit the button now? Well, hello, welcome to another episode. I don't know how it gets to this crazy amount, um, 113, I think we're up to. It is Saturday the 1st of May, pinch and a punch for the first day of the month. Jeez, I'm uh, childish, aren't I? Anyway, big welcome to you guys. Um, this week we're gonna be doing a show about Star Wars, yes, because uh, May the 4th is coming up in a couple of days and uh, I can't have a show on May the 4th because our show's on Saturday. So we'll come in a little bit early. What I thought I'd do is I'd do you a favor and that is I'm going to give you some material that you can go and impre impress your mates with, especially the non synthy mates. You can go and have little conversations down at the pub, tell them all the stuff that you know about Star Wars, and uh, make sure you do it on May the 4th because that would uh, make it a bit, <laughs> a bit better. But anyway, what we might do first is say hello to our lovely guests who um, are the stalwarts of this show, starting with Andy. How's your week been, Andy? Aft, uh, in a word. That's a good northern word, daft. Well, um, I've been without phone, as in landline phone and internet, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Oh, no. For the most part of Wednesday. Um, I got home early on Monday because uh, I was going for a dermatology appointment and blah, blah, blah. It's just, just a medical thing, checkup kind of thing. And internet was fine. I even got a phone call from them saying, can you come a bit early? Yes. So off I went for this appointment, got back, no phone, no internet line, absolutely dead. Get in touch with my provider who sends me a, a text message back on my mobile saying, yeah, there's a fault on your line. We'll send someone from open reach out may take two days. Well, it did. And, and then when the, the guy actually got here, my neighbor had to let him in, but apparently my, cable the cable you know we have these green boxes at the end of our roads that provide all our phone lines and, and broadband and all of that well but my cable to mine had been cut through um either by a previous engineer not that i'd been cut off but it had been simply the cable had been cut through uh or it had been gnawed through more likely by some rodent such as a mouse or a rat well so yeah monday tuesday wednesday uh no tinterweb uh, and then my me, me, new computer's arrived, but I've not had time to get it set up. So my lovely new computer is sitting on the table in the, in the living room, not set up yet. So next week, next week, uh, I'll be doing this from the, the new machine. But I thought I'm not going to risk it, you know, setting it up two hours. So I'll try and set it up just before this and I don't get it sorted and nothing. So I thought, no, I'll, I'll, I've will i got a week to get it going then. So, yeah, that's, that's arrived. It looks great. It looks really lovely. So I'm looking forward to that. Are you going to run the show next week from your new computer? <laughs> uh, well, pff, yeah, well there's, 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 such issues are in the air at the moment, but perhaps we best not talk about such matters. Let's not get know. ahead not, of ourselves. Not me running the show. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Big hello to Darren. Uh, how's your week been? Nice of you to be Hi. here again. Uh, very, um, very plain. I've not done much this week at all. Uh, I've had a chill week. I sent off um, a collaboration track uh, to the person who wants, uh, you know, to, uh, to the person who I was doing it for. Um, and other than that, I've not really done much. I've been sort of studio non-existent for a week. So it's probably my second time in here. Uh, so that's basically all I've done this week. I've had a complete shutdown for a while, uh, for a week, just to have a, a break. Mm. What did you, were you, thing, really. were you finding yourself on a park bench twiddling your thumbs or...? What no, that's where I needed to be, to be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I just, um, with, with constantly writing the tracks, I thought oh, it was just getting a little bit, um, you know, just just needed a break, really, sort of. Uh, too many ideas, and it was doing my head in, because I wanted mm. to work on one track, and I've got ideas for this track, and I want to do that, and I don't get, through the summer, I don't get as much time to work on stuff, so it, it really... It really drains you by the time I get back uh, to get a couple of hours doing things I want to do. So tomorrow, I'm going to try and write a track Sunday morning from 10 o'clock and try and get it out for 4 o'clock. So I don't even know what wow. it's going to be. I've got an idea for one, 
but I'm going to do it. By the time I get home from work tomorrow, which is going to be 10 ish, I would say, get up here. So I'll say 11 o'clock. So I've got 11 o'clock till four o'clock to do a video, do a track, come up with a track, come up with a video, and upload it for four o'clock. So I'm going to see what I can do. No pressure. Uh, that's it. No pressure. I did what I've done one before like that. So see what happens. I've got a little idea of what I want to do, but you should video yourself doing it. Tomorrow. Seriously, you should you should time lapse it or something. Yeah. I keep yeah, I keep saying that I need to get some cameras because I want to get some cameras up here and I can do like a just you know looking in the studio while I'm writing and type just of a, stuff. So just I need a GoPro. to do that. Just put a GoPro in there and put it on time time lapse mode. It'd be simple as, and then you can just stitch that into something else that you've got. It'd be a good idea. Anyway. Food for thought, food for thought. All right, we're going to be saying hello to these other wonderful people, which are called Chatties. Um, we couldn't ca come up with a better name last week, could we? We were talking about whether Chatties was a decent name or not. Uh, but hello to everyone who's who's joined us uh, in the interwebs. And uh, I think Native VS got the Guernsey this week, so big hello to you. Then we had Sonic Links stuff, Sasquatch, uh, Wayne Murray, Virtual VS, which I'm sure is uh, Native VS's brother. Or his cyber twin. Uh, then we had um, corrosive abuser, and scrolling down, Martin Taylor. Big hello to all of you guys and girls, if you are. Uh, keep gender out of this rant. Human error. Big hello. And who else we got? Um, Roy Strobel's there. I haven't seen Roy for a bit. Michael B's there. Big hello to you. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been watching, Michael B's been putting a few vids up on his YouTube channel, so do check him out. There was a nice little unboxing that he did the other day. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. Go check it out on his YouTube channel. Keith in Watford, big hello to you, mate. Um, where else we got? Also, uh, ASIO Head, um, big hello to you, mate. JX3D, massive hello to you. Um, mentioned before we were talking about May the 4th that it's something that the, the Danes celebrate because of the, uh, the 1945 they were released from the harsh grip of Germany so become an independent country. That's something I didn't know about, so that's cool. So you can wear Star Wars outfits at the same time feeling like you're free. Um, that's a cool thing. We go there. Big hello to you. Who else we got? I'm scrolling too far now. I think I have probably reached the depths of my scrolling ability. Uh, Mike Delic, and I'm going to miss a whole bunch of people because I always do because this is when everyone jumps in and says hello. Ato Z is there. Um, who else? I think Ben Breslin, big hello to you. Um, don't know if Ben's been here before, but if he has, welcome back. If he hasn't, big Newbie, hello to you. Foxy Nirvana's there, big hello to you. Max there. Um, dumb Jez is there. A couple of new people jumping in. I like to see the newbies. I think that's about it for now anyway. If anyone else has been missed out, as I say each week, throw your synth at the screen in disgust. Actually, I've been developing um, this whole, whole YouTube thing. They keep emailing me saying, oh, you should set up your... <laughs> join thing. Um, so I'm going to do that. I've been developing um, emoticons for the, um, you know, for the, the chats and um, I've got an emoticon for throw your synth at the screen. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And there's a few others that's, I, it has to be kind of unique. Is it going to be a big show. reveal? Oh, no, I'll just, we'll just muck around with it when it, when it comes up. I'll show you guys. I um, <laughs> haven't quite got it all finished yet, but uh, maybe by next week it might be, actually. So I've been working very hard behind the scenes to do that. Um, yeah, I know Sasquatch, you can click participants so that it doesn't list them all, unfortunately. I uh, tried that, and it's failed. So we won't do that because we miss out on about 80% about, uh, of them. I don't know why it doesn't show them all, but it just doesn't. That's just the way we roll here. All right, let's get stuck into the show. Um, first off, we've got some funny stuff, so we'll do the funny side first. Uh, get the best bit out of the way first. Mm. <laughs> um, just wet the lips first because this week, funny side is themed. Anyway, my PC is now the ultimate sound creation tool in my studio. Your sad <laughs> devotion to that doorless religion hasn't helped you make any decent tracks. I find your lack of knobs disturbing. 
I like that. It's pretty cool. We're going to have a whole bunch of Star Wars themed memes this week. So mm -hmm. I do apologize in advance. Okay, what else have we got? We have got this one. <laughs> T2, you must get this file to Obi Wan Kenobi. Many both ends have died to bring us this information. He's our only hope. Haha, <laughs> he put the synth in his bum. <laughs> you guys won't get it unless you're a synth meme enthusiast, but there's a Volker in his hand if you're wondering. Uh, no one will get it. No one will get it. Here we go. Keep going. And you still haven't found the droids you're looking for from U2 D2. <laughs> And yes, <clears throat> it does take me work getting these guys. VST is the path to the dark side. <laughs> VST leads to analog, analog leads to modular, and modular leads to suffering. <laughs> uh, boys and girls, which one was your favourite? I like the last one. I said the last there's, one. Was... There's truth in that. <laughs> yes. There is. There in, is. In Yoda Veritas. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Um, now, the news. News was kind of a little break from the Star Wars theme just for a little bit while we get in through the news. But some interesting stuff in news. We'll roll the stinger. Now, like I say, every week there's always going to be a bit of hardware news. But before we get into that, let's get into this. Do you guys get this email? Dear Reverb. New. We take our users' privacy, privacy and security very seriously. <laughs> and out of an abundance of caution, we wanted to inform you that Reverb recently became aware of an issue relating to user contact information. At this time, we believe that contact information includes, including name, address, phone number, and email, was publicly accessible for a short period of time. We do not have the reason to believe that any of this information has been misused, nor do we believe that the password or payment information were involved. As soon as we learned of this issue, we immediately worked to resolve it. We conducted an investigation of the situation, determined what happened, and taking steps to prevent something like this from happening. Okay, so then that's saying go change your password, blah, 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 blah. Now, I just wanna bring this up because being someone that works in the IT industry, uh, look, this is, Okay, a couple of things. This is bound to happen. You can be the best cyber security expert in the world and someone will work out how to hack into you. So we aren't completely impenetrable. Um, so I guess it's kind of one of those things where you putting if you're putting information out there on the internet, it's more than likely going to be found by a hacker at some stage. So that's one thing. But it doesn't mean that if we have to have more complex passwords and any of that. In this particular case, this is Reverb saying that they had the information was accessible. What that meant in terms of who access, who was able to access it, who was able to download it and retrieve it, and what they're going to do with it, they actually probably are scratching their heads and don't really know. I guess they could probably look at their server log files and find out what IP addresses it. It would be a massive Pandora's box of a job, though. But this is a probably probably an issue for us musicians, especially when it comes to intellectual property and things like, we're not just talking about reverb here, we're talking about anything where we're putting our information online. And let's say we're putting our master WAV files of a commercial album online somewhere to a distributor, for example. And that master WAV file may be something that you don't want the world to get their hands on. You just want them to get their hands on the MP3 version or the, I am trying to think of an example uh, like that. And that could be a security risk for us as well. So I guess kind of this is a reminder right now that the internet is somewhere where we might have our information found. And does that mean that we should not use it anymore? Should we you know, go back to doing CDs and cassettes? Probably. I don't miss the old CDs and cassettes and vinyl days. They were pretty cool. I used to love going down to the record store. Does that mean that we shouldn't be doing YouTube and things like that? Should I not be showing this as a room in my house? Maybe someone might be thinking of robbing me. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, It gets crazy. So what, what do you guys think about that, that announcement from... I'll start with you, Darren. 
What do you think about the whole announcement from Reverb and the fact that some of their information has been leaked? Well, like you say, I mean, it's, this is an ongoing thing with pretty much everyone, isn't it? I mean, there's always leaks or hacks been, uh, you've heard of hacks and everything. Luckily, I'm not I'm not as uh, out there as everyone else, so <laughs> I'm not so worried about that. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things, like you say, I think I think Chicane, quite a few years back, got his album uh, when he had the what, files and stuff on. A, I don't know if it was on USB stick or something, but when he sent it off, it got uh, it got nicked, uh, and the whole album was pretty much redundant uh, since it was already out there. Mm. Uh, so I think this is always going to happen. Um, but yeah, I say bring back tape, CDs, and vinyl. So much better when you actually have a actual copy yourself on the music front rather than just uh, a file that you don't really own mm. um so yeah it's, like mm. so I, I being being so much technology out there i think it's just it's just one of those <laughs> things you're gonna have to Sorry. learn to sort of expect and uh you know it's it's always gonna happen yeah andy there's, there's not much you can do about it andy do you think we're starting mm -hmm. to become numb to this I don't know about numb to it. I think it, like you've, like both you and Darren have said, it sort of, it goes with the territory. We, we, if we want to function in this sort of modern world in a modern way, we don't have an awful lot of choice. I mean, I resisted internet banking for a long, long time because I really was very suspicious of it, and yet ultimately now I, I can't imagine being Stop. without it. You know, so well, yeah. I mean, t to be honest, Darren. Uh, uh, I've just, I've just sort of, you know, chuck, chuck in the towel of, of my mistrust and, and, and say, yeah, I'm going to use this. And to be fair, it, oh, it's made life yeah, so much got... easier. So, so much easier. It, it is easy. Uh, and and you I do think we just have, have to... no choice these days. Yeah, we, we just have to trust that the people that we are entrusting our details with uh, are going to try and keep them as secure as they possibly can. But like, like we all know, there, are, if people are determined, there's, they'll usually find a way. Mm. So, well, it's, yeah, it is the modern world. And the thing is, like, the names and the addresses may not be anything to worry about too much, but it could be a piece in a jigsaw and then a bit of, you know, social engineering, could find out your birth date, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? You can then put well, together the jigsaw pieces and before you know it, you've got identity theft. There's ways that Well, they, I've already had people, that. You've already had it? Wow. Already, already had that here, yeah. I mean, I started getting uh, letters from, well, uh, the letters started arriving from the, the Inland Revenue, from Lloyds Bank, from um, Companies House, and all sorts of places for a, a company which had been established at my address. Mm. And it was a proper pain in the backside. I mean... Uh, some kind of a plumbing company. Uh, and I said, what? So, you know, credit card, ad, all sorts of stuff kept, kept coming. And I got in touch with, with Company's House to say to try to, to tell them that no such company existed at this address. This was a private address. I'm the owner, no, no company. Uh, and they said to me that uh, I had to prove that, that, uh, that no company existed. I mean, how do, how do you do that? And then I said to them, I said, did you not, do you not run any checks? Do you not run any checks when somebody's registering a company as to who owns that property and whether they are actually establishing a company from it? Oh, no, no, we don't need to do that. We don't. It just means anybody can go in and use any old blithering address. But it, it's frustrating because, I mean, things like credit card applications or uh, bank account things, that can that can impact you you personally. I mean, it, it took a lot of sorting out. I mean, it, we, dealing with Lloyd's Bank to try to get them to understand that I didn't have a, an account with them. Uh, that wasn't my name, and no such person lives at this address. It, it was just a battle. But mm. somehow, somewhere, someone had got various things and and used this address. So, wow! Uh, it seems to have stopped now. Thank heavens. But mm. well, there you go. And it might have been something very small that they've just pieced together by, you know, collating that information from various bits. I mean, we all know about the, the 500 million odd accounts that were uh, retrieved from Facebook and things like that. That was, that was not that long ago either. So, you know, we're looking at mm. um, this, this 
It's happening quite a lot. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if it's going to happen more because of the intelligence that they've got out of that 500 million accounts would be huge, whoever's got hold of that. So anyway, I just thought I'd bring it up because... Um, Information's worth, so it's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's something that we need to keep in, in the back of our minds when we are blindly just uploading stuff and putting our details out there. We maybe just have a bit of a, a five-second breath and just sort of think, hang on a minute, is this really, do I really need this sample library and do they really need to know where I live? Example. All right, let's get back mm. into the news. We are going to talk about this, which I know we've heard all week. It came out, I think, Monday. Uh, sequential have been uh, purchased by the Focusrite group. Um, so it's not exactly new news by the time you get to my show, but I think it's actually worth talking about. And there's a reason why I want to talk about it with you guys and also the chatties and probably uh, more, more so all of us all together. One of the things I'm actually really, really keen on this is the fact that Novation are part of the Focusrite group, which are a synth manufacturer and sequential obviously are and imagine imagine at the moment we've been told they're going to be separate companies still but imagine if those two companies started banging heads together and making a synth how cool would that synth be let's just have a, a bit of a thought there what do you think um darren if there was like a, a merge between novation and sequential with the synth how cool would that be I think that'd be awesome. And I don't see why not. They can still keep the two separate companies apart doing their own stuff, but they can still, like you say, bound their heads together and come up somewhat combined. So I still think they could work that way. I won't be surprised if that happens at some point as well. Mm. It, I think they'll slowly merge more towards each other. Uh, how separate they'll stay in the end, I don't know. But yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, like maybe something like the Tempest, but with the circuit... Uh, sequence system you know or something like that I don't know as an example that'd be pretty cool what about you Andy what what are your thoughts about this merger well I was actually quite surprised um, but when you take a step back and think about it it makes an awful lot of sense really I mean uh, Dave Smith's you know okay he's not a, a a very old man but you know he's he's already past what most people would consider retiring age and I'm sure there'll come a point when he actually is mm. Wanting to take things a little bit easier. Yeah, and 70, I think isn't he? Some of the comments, yeah, 70, 71, something like that. Yeah. I think once, you know, enough, there was some comments that have already been made about the idea of, of, of the curation of the company once he's no longer in charge, if you like. Uh, who's going to look after it? How's it going to progress? And I think the idea of, of leaving it in what he sees as. Uh, safe or secure hands is, is probably a, a very shrewd move in in many ways obviously there's the, the idea of, of of collaboration between sequential and novation that i think mm. everyone's a, a little bit keen to see something happen there even if it's not initially planned i think a lot of people will be going when's it going to happen when's it going to happen and and thereby there was also the comment of course with um with uh, the passing of chris huggett who yeah. was Novation's main sort of yep. uh, synth head. That there's maybe a bit of a, a gap in innovation for a, a, a creator, and maybe there'll be people mm. from Sequential who could come across and sort of d do something. I'm sure they're not without innovation. I'm sure they've got plenty of people. But it, it was just a, a thought. Which I thought, well, well, maybe we'll see. I, I, I just think it's a, it's good. I think that also the idea that. Um, that sequential is now under the umbrella of of a, a uk company is also really quite quite exciting so maybe we'll actually get sort of sequential gear perhaps a little bit cheaper maybe possibly God, i hope so. just being entirely selfish i think well we'll, we'll wait and see <laughs> we'll wait and see well we've just signed our country's just signed a <clears throat> uh trade agreement with the uk um which Mm -hmm. it's, it's silly, really, because we're still alleged to your queen and everything. Um, but anyway, we've we've just signed a trade agreement uh. with your country, <laughs> and um, there'll be like tax-free purchases between both countries now, which is good for you guys because you can get all the mining and uh, pastoral products that we sell, and we can get all the mm -hmm. cool, you know, whatever you guys sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yorkie's chocolate or something. <laughs> yeah, you can, we, you can have Yorkshire. 
Yeah. 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 Um, okay, let's get back into it. Um, yeah, so I just thought that was that was interesting news. And um, yes, I know we've been kind of digesting it all week, but good on you, Dave. Um, you know, he's planned his retirement, I think, and that's kind of the most thing. So he, he, he was probably thinking to himself, what am I going to do with this company? Uh, I can't hold on to it forever because I'm not, I'm not uh, what, he probably wants to be immortal, but he's not immortal. So what I'm going to do with it, I want to put it in the hands of someone. And, uh, you know, $24 million he got for <laughs> it, which... I don't know. I thought that was actually a little bit cheap. I thought maybe I don't really know enough about it, but anyway. Okay, on to the next. On to the next. I'll sell what, myself for less than that. What is this thing? I thought this thing was very interesting. Uh, so I got this bit of information off of Robin. <laughs> this is called the Cicada or Cicada, however you want to pronounce it, and it's an acoustic synthesizer. I'm going to show you a little video in a sec, but I thought I'd just quickly talk to you about it. Basically, these are little sort of. Um, honeycomb sort of like pieces that uh, can bridge together and boundaries between touch and sound. And the idea is to provide an interesting way of manipulating sound from your synthesizer or Eurorack. Um, you're kind of, you've got a, yeah, you kind of have um, five primary components, an amp, a pre, an actuator, a bridge, and a soundboard. Let's let's have a little look at the video, and then we can talk a little bit about price and about uh, function and things like that. Um, because I, I don't know, I just think this is really really cool. So let's get stuck into the vid. Cicada. Cicada is an acoustic vibration organism that transmits incoming audio signals into a vibration sends this vibration to the wings. From here the signal travels through various materials, creating new textures of sound and new control voltages along the way. Cicada is made of pre and dual amp, actuator, soundboard, interface and wings. Cicada is a sound art object built for elbow rack and modular systems with the idea to go beyond electrical and connect synthesis with the physical world. <laughs> there we go, guys. Cicada. Cicada. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of that? Interesting, hey? Do you, guys want to, do you want to know a little bit more about it? <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I, I well, didn't get anything really from what she was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, so basically, um, those little wings that you see on it, they're kind of like, um, I, I was sort of working at it, it's kind of like vibrations and things from different elements that it can bring the sounds into your Eurac or your, your modular gear. And... Um, it's amplified and carried across a bridge, which is the wings, and then that's transformed into vibrations and um, modulated so we can hear it, right? And that resulting signal is then attenuated, filtered, and pre-amplified in the pre-module. And there's also like force uh, sensitive resistors, um, which can generate CV as well. So you can actually um, use it with you know CV controls mm -hmm. as well. Now, um, price-wise, we are talking about a Founders Edition, which is 230 euros, which will get you one of each of the parts, and she mentioned the parts before. Or for 370 euros, you can double up on the actuators and bridge and the main unit for an extended version. Now, from what I can work out, you'd probably want to go with the extended version because the basic version, it, it's kind of almost <coughs> like, kind of almost like a one oscillator slash resonator type setup. Um, this is probably kind of one of those things where I reckon if you did a live gig and you started showing this, you know, to people who are watching, they, they would be absolutely intrigued. It's kind of one of those kind of funky sort of musical performing type devices. That's, that's how I kind of looked at it. It doesn't necessarily mean it might be the sound designer's dream, but it's more kind of like a showpiece and mm -hmm. a bit of a funky sort of way. Any thoughts, Darren? What about you? Starting with you, because you're a bit of a Eurorack guy. Park I'm bench. A bit confused. I know. I thought. Yeah. Well, could you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, the, the sound actually just sounded like rings to be honest um, it's a re it's set in resonated ring didn't it yeah yeah um i don't know i can't remember my up about it i think it's one of those like really cool weird things that you'd have in the studio uh, a bit like the um the moog um thurman you know the, that really expensive one and you'd have that and then something like that as well i don't know i can't really i can't even see playing live that it would be that interesting it's not as if it's you, you can't you can't see it physically doing anything it's just be sat there won't it i mean i sort of get what it does but i just i don't know i can't sort of i like it but it wouldn't be I, I, no i don't know i don't know <laughs> i'm really not sure about it i'm not saying it's not a good idea and it's a cool little um geeky gadget but yeah i just no i just no i don't know well, before we go to Andy, I'll just Andy, quickly, what do you think? I'll just go. To, I'll go to the website first, and um, well, Andy, you can talk while we're looking at this. So this is their website. It's they're basically talking about this as a physical sort of way of synthesizing. So you can see see the little wings touching. That it's that's kind of like a physical thing. So there's something touching something. Did you that's break vibrating. one of the wings or something? Well, you can get replacements. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Oh, I think it's one of the, I think it's one of those things that you look at it and you just go, yeah, what? It's got a two shape pad, Darren. Look, you got you can do two shape thing on it. I think it's one Hi. of those things that if you actually play played with it, it would reveal it itself. It's one of those. It's an alternative. It would expand uh, interfaces. In, you know, interesting an interesting device. You know, um, it, I, th I do think it's. Uh, uh, an, an interesting is that 1,600 I mean, USD? Yeah, so 1,600 US dollars, 2,700 US dollars. That's an awful lot of money. So this this is what really? I was saying. Before, yeah. This is what I was saying before, guys. There's a founder's edition for 230 euros, uh, which will get you one of each part, and then the actual price goes up to 2,300 US. So it's kind of like. Um, yeah, like I, I don't see that's like a massive difference. That's almost like ten times the price. It, that doesn't really sort of wash yeah. well with me. But hey, maybe I don't know. Maybe the founders edition is uh, um, <laughs> a piece of paper, and you have to go and that's, source all the bits. I don't uh, know. No, that, yeah. that, that just looks like that. That's just At something that, that uh, for for, pe for studios with you know someone who's got a studio with loads of money and doesn't know what else to buy next. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd, you, you could just buy a, a, a virtually a modular system for that at two thousand seven hundred. Yeah, well, you yeah, put that exactly. you put that, put that next to your OP one, right? Okay, bad joke. Um, <laughs> interesting, interesting, different interfaces for performing. Uh, I've said before, I quite like the idea of them. So, but at that price, oh, there's a lot of other things. You know, that mm. that new. I mean, the, the Osmos keyboard thing that we've talked about before that that'll be available i think at some point soon and i know that's not cheap but you got a whole you got a whole synth built into it as well as the swanky performs in every direction keyboard mm. Mm. yeah mm. As, instead of just little wings but yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah now and an inverted um, speaker wings with the bastard we'll get we'll get to the <laughs> we'll get to the chatties in a minute they're commenting about this we'll get to you guys in a sec um, now, the West, now this actually came in now I don't know a lot about this this is actually something that um, Mr. Mac has suggested that we talk about um, which is this ACD Gen and uh, I did get the website up now I'm going to be kind of flying noob on this the hardware edition is a limited edition uh, hardware version of the ACD Gen Max for live device which I'll show you a picture of in a sec. And it's a little MIDI pattern generator, uh, like, you know, another name for an arpeggiator, which gives, lets you use different algorithms to create 16th note acid style bass lines and melodies with a push of a button and manipulate them live using the different parameters available. Now, the reason why he he's, um, suggested that I show this is because this is made by Spectra Audio, Spectro Audio um, in Brazil. And the creator um, 
has just uh, re-announced that they're going to be reshipping these. They've had, they had some trouble getting these things made during COVID, as we all probably would understand. Right, so let's uh, let's just turn this off. Now, I do have a video for this, so let's hopefully we don't get a copyright strike playing the video, but let's have a little look at the video. Hi, everybody. This is Ikaro Fehi from Spectra Audio. Today, I have three great news related to AcidGen Hardware Edition. First, I'm excited to announce that we're finally releasing another batch of hardware units. This latest batch took a bit longer than expected because of many new manufacturing challenges caused by COVID, especially here in Brazil. Nevertheless, we will finally be opening pre-orders very soon. If you don't want to miss your chance of getting one of these units, make sure to follow Spectro Audio on Instagram and sign up for a newsletter to get notified about pre-orders. Shipping might be a little bit more complicated this time, again because of COVID. But I hope okay, we're not going to listen to him telling us all about shipping and stuff, but let's have a look at the features just while we've got it paused there. It's got MIDI clock sync, MIDI and USB ports, bus powered, easy to use interface, uh, which we'll have a look at in a sec, like I said, the um, Max for Live interface. Eight modes of algorithms, six swing levels, three swing modes, three shift modes, automation via MIDI CC, non-destructive pattern manipulation, which I like, which means that what that means is when you're in, in a performance, you can mangle the pattern and then switch back to the original pattern. And that makes, that makes for sort of good sort of uh, drifty sort of um, musical sort of differential sort of stuff, but then keeping sort of structure. I like that sort of stuff with um, hardware devices. MIDI CC sequencing I mentioned before. KB, uh, keyboard shift uh, transposition, uh, which is really important. So when you're playing a MIDI in Keynote, it will transpose the whole thing. Plus you also get the software customizer as well. Now, let me see if I can grab uh, while you guys um, maybe a quick comment from uh, from you, Darren. Um, what do you think of the ACD gen? Have you heard of this before? While I get the website, uh, I've up. not heard of this particular. I've not heard of this particular one, but I have actually got um, a VST. It might be a Max for Live actually, which is does a similar thing, but it's obviously not hardware, and it, I really love it. So this looks quite interesting, and I quite like the look of this and sounds of it. So yeah. If it, if it does very similar to the um, Max for Live or VST uh, plugin that I've got, um, I'll be quite interested. Uh, and with it being a little bit of hardware, it's not massive, it's great. So, And like you say, the, the bit where you can switch back to your original pattern and then switch back to you know uh, changing the pattern without having to worry about losing it, that's, that's cool as well, especially mm. for live play. I think that would be really nice. So let's, ha let's have a quick look at the Max for Live version of it because this thing is based on, the hardware version is based on this. So this is what the Max for Live version looks like. It's a little acid uh, pattern generator. It's only uh, about $15 US. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, anyway, um, Andy, your view on, on this little device. Kind of jumping it on. Ooh, well, uh... I know nothing about it, uh, and if I'm honest with you, I didn't really. I think I've got my stupidity cells switched on big time today. Because again, I was listening to it going, I'm not really understand understanding what the man's talking about here. So it's a little sequencer that, that does funky little sequences in a little box. Yeah, here's a here's What's the not to like. Here's the website. What's of, not to like of it? I mean, again, uh, the, the price there, two hundred and eighty dollars. Well, it's not a huge sum, but uh, uh, um, hmm. don't really know. I don't know. It's all covered in mud. Yeah, I think. Look, I think this is kind of where where software meets hardware. It's a little bit a bit like like the blue up, right? Um, you guys have seen me. So, yeah, some people it. are mentioning the noodler, the noodler in the chat as being perhaps more flexible or something. But yeah, I'd say I the don't I'd really know much about that one either. I'd say the blue up would or probably the blue be. Arp. The ultimate yeah. one, yeah, because that's that's very similar. Mm. The Blue Up is a pattern generator editor, and it came from its roots of being a software VST, like <laughs> this thing. So, yeah, it's so, kind of similar. Yeah, but thanks, anyway, human error. Yeah, click reset. Um, Thank you. <laughs> let's have a look what um, what Stephen said anyway. So, um, great thing about it is its performance. It's all yeah. So that's what that's what I picked up. It's all about. It's pity that the we probably should have found some more videos on it showing this thing in performance mode. Maybe there was more towards the end of that video. I, I didn't 
um, give it a good run. It's a seven minute video though. Um, but yeah, like um, it's like it's like I said before, it's kind of it's cheap, you know, hundred and two sorry, hundred and fifty quid or two hundred and eighty euros or US dollars. Um, and yeah, I, I personally, because I've got the blue up, I'm probably I'm and I've also got the noodle, I'm probably fat and happy with that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, that what we might do is we might revisit that. So um, I'm actually thinking about doing an arpeggiator uh, episode for the live stream. So I think that would actually fit in nicely to show products that are uh, out there um, that are kind of like standalone arpeggiators. Because um, I do want to kind of touch on synths that have got arpeggiators. I want to touch on little hardware devices like the Blue Arp and the Noodler and this. And I also want to talk about Euro Rack modules that have got ARPs in them as well. So that will be coming up. I don't know if it's going to be next week, but maybe if I get time to set the video and content up, it might be. Never know. Um, and that was, uh, yeah, so that's the news. Um, I think we should uh, head on into this land. There we go. We finished the stinger. Waiting patiently for it to finish. Uh, I, I just oh. got to get off my ass and change it one day. Um, why am I showing Moog, Moog Source as a... Uh, it's not a scam, but it's an interesting price. I don't know if I'd pay 3000 US for a Moog Source. Um, but I think the actual reason why we're showing the Moog Source on this show is because... Drum roll. <laughs> I've got to turn this off first. This reason. <laughs> Did you work out the link? I bet you weren't even thinking that, were you? So um, it is a Star Wars theme show, and I thought, geez, that's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, you can get yourself yes. a you can get yourself a Moog source um, because Luke used one. Uh, and if you really, you, you know, if you really want to create those um, those Star Warsy sounds, I. Have by the way, disclaimer. I don't think any Star Wars sounds were made on a Moog source, but just in case, I mean, there was a Luke. He had a photo with one. Maybe there was. I don't know. We can get one for about uh, three thousand US. Um, by the way, just so we know, it generally sells for around about fifteen hundred US used this synth. So that's probably in a little bit more sort of pricey sort of range. But anyway, let's keep going. Next one we've got is this one. This one is really oh, <laughs> kind of interesting. Did you guys see recently there was a bunch of videos floating around Facebook and social media about Battlestar, Galactus, Battlestar Galactica and Cylons and how they made the Cylon voice? And if you, if you didn't know, they used one of these with a bunch of other things, but pretty much mainly one of these. And uh, yes, you can say buy your command as much as you'd like um, after you've spent £7,000. Um, you probably might need to say buy your command to your wife after you've told her that you spent seven thousand pounds on this. Mm. But it's look, it's probably actually what they're worth. Um, but it yep. even says in here, it's, it even says Cylon Synthy. I did, I just noticed that. I didn't <laughs> even actually realise that. How cool is that? That's got absolutely nothing to do with Star Wars, but the science fiction, a little bit of a slight. I don't know. Um, I just thought, yeah, sci-fi. Question yeah. just is, do, do you know whether that's a, a vocoder with its own uh, sound generator in it, a bit like the, the VP330, or or do you actually have to, is it just a, a machine for imposing one signal on another, uh, like a traditional vocoder? I suspect it's just a traditional vocoder, and you have, you have to plug, uh, you know, microphone in one channel, synth in another, or some other sound source in another. No, no, no. I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that it generates the sound from just an audio input. I'm pretty sure, but I could be wrong. I am not a massive knowledge person about this particular type of vocoder. No, I, I don't know much about it. Yeah, either. maybe one of the chatties. Let's have a quick look at what the chatties are saying. That does take a couple of seconds for them yeah, to catch up. Wagoo's just okay. said, I don't think so. The Cylon signal chain uses the ARP 2500 oscillator. Go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There you go. So there's your so answer. It is, it is just a traditional vocoder. You need both both bits. You need to, mm. yeah. 
Yeah. And oh, well, I mean, it's, I mean, the EMS, it's obviously, they're rare. There'll not be many of those knocking about. So you're paying for that factor too, aren't you? Well, I mean, look, if you're in the, in the market for £7,000 for a vocoder, you might as well go find yourself an ARP 2500 while you're at it. I mean, look, you know, hey, um, <laughs> just chuck them in the back of the Lambo when you're picking them up. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting right, ridiculous. Chuck one ARP module in the back of a Lambo. Looks like got room for anything else. <laughs> You've probably got that violin as well. Right. Okay. <laughs> we shall. We shall get into the the cool part of the show. That's this part of the show. Yep. Uh, Baby Yoda approves this show. Just in case you're wondering, I did ask him, and he went. Ee, ee. Um, something like that. I didn't use the vocoder. Anyway, we will start with um, probably the first, well, okay, what we're we gonna do, what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk a little bit about, not Darren, me. Sorry, sorry, Darren. You, you can talk if you like, Darren. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about say. Um, Star Wars-y type things, right? And what I thought I'd do is I would talk, I'm just getting some graphics up while I talk. What I thought I'd do is I just I would start it. I'm not going to show you everything out there that I that is potentially in the world to know about Star Wars music and synths and sound design and things like that. But I thought I'd show you some cool things. And this actually it's your fault. You guys who are watching, you're to blame for this show because last week you asked me to do the R2D2 patch on the 2600, right? And as a result, guess what I'm going to be doing? Yes. I'm going to be doing the R2-D2 patch on the 2600. The CTPL. <laughs> okay, so uh, in order to do that, we probably need to... I need to move my chair back, and we probably need to go to this view, and voila, monsieur, we have a R2-D2 patch. And so um, for those playing along at home, copy where all the patch cables go, take a little pause the video, no, I'll go, I'll go through it a little bit with you so you can understand. But I've got this actually firing off on the keyboard and uh, it sounds a little bit like this. And obviously you can change it a little bit by doing things like this. All right, so there you go. I did the R2-D2 patch. Now, <laughs> now shut up and stop asking me to do the R2-D2 patch because <laughs> apparently there's a lot of people out there that think it's absolutely lame and uh, I don't know, it sounds all right. Okay, so what is it? It's, um, well, let's go back to it. Let's, let's quickly, for those who really, really love R2-D2 and think he's awesome, there is a part of it where he uses his voice and he uses the preamp and the envelope follower. Um, yes, you can do that, you can add that to it. Um, but it's basically, what it is, it's sample and hold and, and uh, ring mod. And so you're actually not even using um, the oscillator voices. What you're doing is you're using the oscillators to pitch modify the ring mod and you're using an LFO and a sample and hold to then mangle that, that up. So that is pretty much it. And uh, like I said, just screenshot that and you've got yourself an R2-D2 patch. It's probably not the only way to do it, by the way. Um, if you go and look on YouTube, there actually is a couple of different ways that you can do an R2-D2 patch. But um, just, just in case, we'll just double check if, uh, if he approves. Yep, R2-D2 approves. He even said this. There you go. Right. Um, oh, that was cheesy, wasn't it? <laughs> we will move on. Um, in fact, what, what are the chatty saying about the R2-D2 patch? What are they saying? They don't well, really Azio, Azio Head's getting his cult. They don't care. They don't. Azio Head said, he does, yeah, he doesn't like stuff. I told you there's, div there's div it's divisive, Andy. I told you. It's divisive, <laughs> right? It's a divisive subject. Well, it's more divisive if you say, do you like the new ones or the originals? Well, do you know what? <laughs> then it's divisive. Uh, do you know what? If you're, if you're a Trekkie... Uh, fan, there's a massive, massive amount of sound bites that they've got from all the different, like, you know, the hollow deck and that. We, I mean, you could do another show, you do another hundred shows on Star Trek. So mm. we won't go there. But anyway, what we'll do is we'll, I'll go through this two more that I before, want to talk about. Before we jump, can we mention mm -hmm. Sasquatch's comment? Because I think it just made me laugh. He said, you know, the R2-D2 voice really annoys me, especially as they, there it is, they in speech marks, 
had the technology to produce C C3PO at the same time. So if if they could produce one droid that can actually speak using languages, why would they have another one that just goes, you know, bleep, 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 bleep. sample and hold bleep? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was I kind of... Was, I thought that was good, Sasquatch. That's a proper hair splitting, but they're, they're true. <laughs> I think it was the fact that they were introducing all these concepts of, uh, like, you. I mean, you'd be right up this alley, Andy, with your linguistics hat on. It was kind of like a binary language that, like, droid language that people learnt how to actually understand orally. So, um, yeah, I think that was kind of the whole theory behind it. Yeah, crazy. Quite anyway, hard, eh? translate. <laughs> let's go to the next. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. The next one is this one. So there's me mate uh, Han, and uh, he's yeah, got like, this. I don't give a. He's got this thing in his hand called a, a laser pistol, right? Now, yeah. a lot of people might argue with this, but I don't care because I actually think this is actually really, really cool. This <laughs> is how you create the laser pistol sound. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, it is actually, well, it's on the internet, so it must be true. Um, no, that is actually how you There's create it. There's also another way as well. <laughs> there's obviously, there's a million ways of doing it, obviously. But, yeah, well, um, sometimes you can hit a railway track, it does the same thing. But you shouldn't be playing on the railway tracks, by the way. I actually do remember, um, <laughs> I do remember, was it Ben Ben Burt, the guy that does all the sound effects? Um, I, I do remember a video where he was talking with mm. uh, George Lucas. This is a long time ago. This is before the internet, where he talked about going out onto some uh, telegraph pole and some, you know, cable, and he talked about banging it with a pipe. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't quite like that. He, bang, he banged it with a pipe, so it probably got a little bit nicer sort of sound. But yeah, I do remember him saying that. Now, some people would argue that that's not actually how the laser sounds. So let's just see if the chatties are throwing their synths at the screen right now about that one. Let's see if they are. Ooh. Yep, I think they're agreeing. Anyone else? No, mm. no one's, no one's, <laughs> no one's rebutting it. Okay, I think we've uh, we've escaped that one. All right, let's do the last one, and that is the. Uh, the light saber um, sound effect. Now, um, I'm probably gonna risk getting a copyright claim on this because I'm actually gonna play you a video where um, Ben is actually talking in an interview and what he's talking about, I'll just sort of kind of introduce you to the topic. He's, uh, this is a really big long sound design video where he, he's been interviewed about all the different sound effects where he does actually talk about R2D2 and things like that. But this particular part, he's talking about the labor, the labor, the light saber sound effect uh, the hum sound is originally um, from a low-pitched hum noise from projection equipment, which we'll talk about in a sec. And then he combined it with the sound of an old tube television. And then he played that sound through a speaker and he moved the microphone around to get you that sort of rise and fall and pitch of the lightsaber. So I'll just shut up and you guys can have a little listen. A projection booth with some very, very old simplex projectors in them. And they had an interlock motor which connected them to the system, which when they just sat there and idled, made a wonderful humming sound. And it would slowly change in pitch, and it would beat against another motor. There were two motors, and they would harmonize with each other. And it was kind of uh, that inspiration. Uh, that, that sound was the inspiration for the lightsaber, and I went and recorded that sound. All right, so I'm not going to play any more of that just because it might be copyright strike time. But there you go. So lightsaber sound was that kind of sort of sound, and that was done with the recording of that projector, which you actually just heard, and um, and then played back through a loudspeaker, as I mentioned before, and moving a microphone around in front of the speaker to get you the pitch. Interesting. So I've broken Pandora's box right open. What do you guys think of this topic this week? Interesting. I remember seeing yeah. that yeah. video about the sound design. Yeah, that was really interesting. And the fact that, you, you, that it's less to do with actual, you know, synthesizers and more to do with, you know, the, the, just things around you and micing them up and moving microphones around and putting them through speakers, different positions. I, I think that sort of stuff really quite fascinating, how they did come up with these 
things. I mean, Delia Derbyshire was mentioned in the chat, of course, about yep. you know y using just things that are around you and, and then manipulating the recordings to create something something different. It's mm. great. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Darren, you yeah, were, uh, you were going to say the same thing. I was going to, I was going to say, yeah. Um, well, Andy just mentioned it actually about really Darbyshire there. Yeah. But I was saying, yeah, it's the same when I did the the track when I trashed all my synths, and I was just using rubber bands and yeah, that was else, great, and the chair and stuff like that. Yeah, so, that was so great. Yeah, video, I, I like doing it. It's, it's hard work, but yeah, I like I like that type of stuff. In fact, I might do um, I might actually get myself a hand recorder and go out. Uh, do a live, well, not live, but go out recording it um, mm. and come back and make a track out of it. So I might do that at some point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's me digressing there. So <laughs> No, that's fine. I mean, this this is what this is about. This is actually ideas that sort of, it's not like it's new ideas. It's just ideas to go, hang on a minute. I can, yeah, it's, I'm excited now. I might actually go and try something. And you never know, that might turn into a track. And if that happens then we're winning, and that's what I'm saying. And not only that, if you don't ever go and make a track out of it, at least you've got something to go and chat to your mates about on the 4th of May or May the 4th, so you sound <laughs> like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> you can just replay the video. I was hitting video. a big cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sound like you're yeah. this smart. And they're going, why? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, what I you're saying about going around with a handheld though. recorder, Darren, is... I was going to say, going around with a, a handheld recorder, Darren. I, I actually did it years and years and years ago with a with a Fostex X15 slung over my shoulder and a Shure SM57 microphone, walking around into the station down the road from me here, uh, recording the sound of traffic, walking into little workshops and things that are dotted around this area. And uh, there was a great machine that was for taking tires off wheels you know uh, you take the wheel take the tire off it and it made some great noises and i just said can i record that well, if you want to you weirdo that's fine yeah so and just recorded it and it was all recorded <laughs> yeah. to cassette and then i went back and sampled them sampled the interesting bits of the things that i found interesting into uh into me w30 still got all those discs and they still play mm. Mm. nice one that's yeah that's what i say i mean i've done a bit of recording uh on, you know for traffic and stuff which is dotted about my tracks from here to when i started but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's good it's good it's good to do and yeah, i think it's feel, always sometimes fun when you feel when, as though you're when you use creating, your own yeah you feel as though you're creating more than getting the synth out you feel i don't know it just feels as though you're creating more even though it, at the end of the day it's still a sound uh for your track but for some reason it feels like you've literally created it from the barest of bear rather than just going right let yeah. me have a look for the preset on here that sounds good <laughs> So yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Whilst there might be a thousand and one different traffic samples out there available, none of them will be the same as the one that you it's record never standing the same. exactly standing in the city centre of Manchester with a microphone and a tape recorder. Mm. <laughs> Which At would be a brave point, thing to do. Uh, and that, that thing's passing. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> Without a mask <laughs> on. <laughs> well the uh, chatties the chatties well, have been saying uh some interesting stuff. Uh like for example, John Shea. I don't know if he's saying or he's asking or if he's confirming. He walked log Ewok drums logs. on a DX7. Interesting. Uh, don't know. Um, I can tell you that if you do look up Star Wars music and go to Wikipedia, there is a massive amount of uh, reference links at the bottom of the Wikipedia page where you can go and f dig into what synthesizers were used and obviously, you know, London Symphony Orchestra. Um, Williams used that for the original theme tune and blah, 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 blah. But one of the things I found was interesting is they used uh, vocoders for the boy choir sound in uh, some of the more recent Star Wars movies. Um, so it's, yeah, we, we shouldn't be surprised about this. Um, we should not be surprised about it. I love the fact that um, people know what some of this sounds like. John Shea is saying the TIE Fighter Pass was a truck sound. I've always actually wondered what that is. I'm sure that um, Ben has probably talked about it further in that video. I actually haven't watched the whole thing. But, yeah, it's really, really cool. And, look, these these sounds have become synonymous. We, we're just so used to them, we immediately think. Because you see a laser or you see the lightsaber, you just think that's what it is. But, yeah, how how fake is it really? Like, so fake, isn't it? So it's actually cool. I like it. And I like the ability that we can manipulate people's... 
uh, imaginations with sound. And I think that's actually that's our job as musicians is to manipulate yeah, into people's a different imaginations, context and it sounds different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the best the best example I've got is on my two um, game trailer videos because all that is uh, stuff that um, I got or most of it got like um, electric drill and everything for the gun and stuff like that and laser shots and yeah I was just wondering where I did it but yeah on the two two videos for uh, game trailers that took me weeks and weeks I think there's about 102 120 tracks on them just just all foley. Mm. Anyway, sorry, carry on. That's no, that's fine. Um, I was going to actually go through your your YouTube channel, but I just realised I don't think I've got the sound plugged in again, which I can do. But uh, why don't we have a bit of a look at um, Darren's YouTube channel? Uh, and Darren, you can point out which that video you were talking about is with all the spoons and things. That it is. I trashed my sense. That's right. Uh, you'll yes, see yes, a yes. bin with. Um, there it is, there it is. Yeah. Just there, I trashed all my sins with the mm. bin. Yep. That's that's all rubber bands, foley and stuff. Yeah, so um, why don't I get that prepared and we can have a little bit of look at that in a sec. Obviously, I had to nick someone with a harp because uh, I didn't have one and I had a day for it. Yeah. Um, well, maybe just <laughs> just just um, intro it for a sec <laughs> while I get set up. Ouch, I just banged my head. Intro it while I get it set up. Intro it. I think well this was uh, this was when I think it was in the first lockdown I did this, if I remember rightly. And um obviously boredom setting um and I was fed up of using my synths. So I uh, just made a small track up with Foley sounds. Ninety percent Foley sounds. I had to uh nick one or two things, but pretty much everything. It's not necessarily in time because I came up with the video after I've done the sounds. So, yeah, don't expect the sounds to fit the video. On the spinning glass as well, yeah. Now, I am going to pause that halfway through because I think so cool. that everyone else should go check out the rest of that video themselves on Darren's channel. Darren's uh, channel is, um, Darren, if you, just, if you write something in the YouTube chat, they'll be able to click on your name and <clears throat> visit your channel. It's actually actually in the description. There you go. You can find Darren's channel yeah. in the, my video description. Um, so make sure you go bookmark him and follow him and all that sort of subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Really, really good. I remember when you actually did that. Yeah, and we, for that. I'm pretty sure we've actually shown that before on the show. But um, I think this we is, did, yeah. When this I, is, like I say it was in the first lockdown. This is exactly like mm. what we're talking about. Sound design, 
breaking yourself out there. Grab yourself a recorder. Like some people were talking in the chat about getting a you know Zoom recorder, or um, you don't have to get Zoom. You can get the, uh, the Tas Tascam ones are just as good as Zoom, I believe. Um, while we're talking about recorders and stuff, this is actually pretty cool to do that sort of stuff with as well. Believe it or not, because it's got line in and record and sampling and uh, and then you've got the granular synth and mangling and all that sort of stuff. And we, and we did show that on the stream. I know it was not the, I'm not the best synth demoer uh, or sampler demoer in the world, but um, we did go through all the that sort of aspect of it. And I think I sampled the guitar and my voice. Can you remember? I think I said crikey or something, didn't I? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So um, that's that's kind of that's kind of the whole idea is um, is to give you guys inspiration with samplers and and then turning them into wavetables or turning them into granular or turning them in just into an oscillator if you want to. Um, that is you know kind of what the the Fairlight did for us, isn't it? Right at the start where they, where they could sample some of those sounds and then they'd pitch it right down or they'd pitch it right up and it wouldn't you wouldn't have a clue what originally the sound was. So there's all those sort of, sort of techniques and reversing things. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. Um, okay, chatties. What I want to ask the chatties is, do you guys have, I mean, there's a couple that's come through already, but do you guys have any Star Wars related sound design tidbits that you'd like to sort of chuck in and uh, add to the sort of, the brains trust that we've had going so far. We've had, um, my three with the the R two D two sound with the ARP twenty six hundred. We had the, the hitting the wire cable for the laser pistol, and we had the projector hum for the lightsaber. And then we had the truck going past, which was by John Shea with the for the Tie Fighter. And I think someone mentioned. I think it was John Shea again for the DX seven for the drum sounds of the Ewoks. So yeah, if you've got any others that you want to add, I mean, we did mention. Battlestar Galactica with the Cylons, and we showed, I know it's not Star Wars related, but we showed that the, the vocoder was the uh, EMS 2000 vocoder. Um, they did use vocoders in Star Wars as well. I believe they used um, the Roland vocoder uh, for, no, nah, it's, it's slipped my mind. I'm having a mental blank what it was used for. Uh, someone will remember. But yeah, if you can come up with one in the chat, let us know. Um, I'll give you a chance to, don't forget to highlight my name at Ramsey when you're saying it, just, just in case. It's not going that quick today, so I'm keeping an eye, I'm able to keep an eye on it a little bit better than normal, which is good. Um, but yeah, that's cool. What do you guys think about um, the idea of doing an arpeggiator show? Um, does that sound like an interesting topic for you guys? I hardly ever use arpeggiators. Yeah. Um, I've got them. <gasps> I've got, uh, almost everything, almost, I know, Darren. Um, oh. I know. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm, I'm going to have to walk out the room. You don't use our pet I, I, I know me and man love them. No, I, I do. I do use it occasionally on, on the supernova. Well, I mean, on on my pro one. I mean, I also just use the sequencer, but I never use never use the arpeggiator. I, I hardly ever. I'm actually quite intrigued to, to know to know more though. I mean, I'm I'm dead intrigued by the uh, the, the the blue arp. I mean, that's definitely a a really I mean, where's where do you draw the line between arpeggiator and sequencer? When does an arpeggiator become a sequencer, and when is a sequencer an arpeggiator? <laughs> well, they they kind of cross I over. I mean, they cross yeah. over. Yeah. yeah, they do. Of course, they do. Yeah, because it's yeah. When, when I'm writing my yeah, track, the arpeggiator a, becomes. I think it's a good idea. Uh, a riff maker as well, because I yeah. take the arpeggiator and then I take key, uh, notes that it pumps out out of that, and then make a riff out of that. So it's not actually an ar arpeggiator, mm. but it starts from an arpeggiator. Yeah. So let's not waste all of our cool ideas right now talking about that because that's next next show topic. What I want all you right. to what I want you guys to do is, uh, and this includes chatties as well, is if you want me to cover something specific. Obviously, I'm going to cover the blue arp. I'll probably have the the noodler in there. I might have a couple of synths that I might talk about that have got good arpeggiators in them. Um, and I've got one arpeggiator or two arpeggiators in Eurorack that I can muck around with. If you guys want me to cover something like specifically like um, Stephen asked me to cover the uh, ACD Gen today, um, I'll probably go back and revisit that and see if we can dig some more information up about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we might even be able to get 
the guy on the show from Brazil. Um, that might be cool to have a special guest. Um, or we could get um, Oleg again from Blue Arp. Um, anyway, we send your information through via email. My contact details are on my about part of the YouTube channel. Um, <coughs> don't just start typing now in chat what you want me because <laughs> I just won't. I won't get it. What I want you guys to type in chat now just, is Have we is just set up to... a, a mega arpeggiator patch? Should we? Should yeah. we should... Should we do that? Darren, set up a mega <laughs> yeah. arpeggiator patch. I'll set up a mega arpeggiator Great patch. Great idea. Great idea. To try and learn the bloody things. And then, yep. right, Andy, what's your effort? Yep. <laughs> All right. Go on, let's do that. We'll have, we'll have a... Because we'll have a, I'm sure I'm sure there was a time when you did something like, um, uh, what patch have you set up for, for the show this week? Um, I used to like that, and it seems to have disappeared, you know? So, uh, yeah, right, Darren, get your arpeggiators out. I'll... I'll, I'll Try and learn what arpeggiators do for next week. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things I'm I'm going to do without actually playing it is I'm going to name a couple of songs that have got famous arpeggiators in them. So oh, well, yes. um, that will kind of you know get our <laughs> propellers on our hat spinning. But yeah, that uh, will be uh, we'll, we'll try and see if we can make that for next week. So um, tell your friends, tell your mum. Um, let's go back to talking about um, sound design and Star Wars. What have the guys been talking about? Uh, not that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just actually scrolling back to see if they actually did say anything. Uh, no, they haven't. Maybe I covered it. Maybe I've, I've exhausted. I, I have definitely <laughs> not exhausted. I definitely haven't exhausted it. Oh, gosh. You, I mean, seriously, there's so many YouTube videos you could watch on the Star Wars stuff. It's crazy. In fact, if you're bored uh, next week, I don't think you guys are getting as bored now that the weather's <laughs> warming up, right? It's not It's not so bad in your neck of the woods. But if you are bored... Big bloody freeze in here this week. <laughs> um, you could go and... Uh, I mean, May the 4th's coming up. Maybe you, you could give some Star Wars love. Maybe subscribe to the Disney Channel and watch a couple of Star Wars. If you haven't seen The no. Mandalorian... Oh my god! If you haven't seen that series, who hasn't seen that series? Seriously, that is actually a really, really good Star Wars kind of subset storyline. It's so cool. I mean, obviously that's where Baby Yoda comes into it. Um, but yeah, go watch. The, go watch the Mandalorian. There's actually like um, there's there's some clip art type sound effects in that show that signify certain things like for example there's a sound that they play which is kind of like a fluty sort of riff thing which signifies you, that you're seeing the mandalorian so there's they use sound in their in their shows to sort of signify characters and um you know and that's kind of like their icon sound or the avatar type sound it's kind of interesting how they do that it's it's a kind of a it's a george lucasy disney sort of thing i think um but yeah mm. yeah Definitely interesting. Wagoo's saying he hasn't watched it yet. Wow. I, that surprised me. I thought Wagoo would be on top of it. Seriously. Um, yeah. Um, Sonic mm -hmm. Link wants me to talk about master buses. Master bus stuff. Wow. Right. Um, I'm probably not your guy. Seriously. I uh, When it comes to the studio and mastering and consoles and things like that, I'm probably not your guy. Uh, I haven't got really any experience with that. We'd probably need to get someone like Chicky, uh, Charles Chicky. Uh, Re is it Charles Chicky? Re what's his last name? Reeves. Reeves. Someone like that. We'd need, yeah. we'd need to get him on the show. Someone who's got some, mm. or, or maybe, um, uh, yeah, a couple of the Sonic State guys. Just someone who knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we, I mean, we, <laughs> we'd we be grasshoppers asking them questions. Like, so how, what, what makes a good mix? You know. That sort of stuff. And they'd probably get that asked that all the time. Um, so, yeah, we won't be doing that. Well, not with me anyway, because it'll just be bad advice. Um, oh, you just plug the cable in and then just turn the faders up to 11. Uh, yeah. Um, Twiddle till it sounds good. Oh, can press the hell out of it. Sonic Link's been nice to me. Get, get, someone give him a lollipop. Um, my tunes sound way better than my stuff. Well, it's literally, it's just use your ears is kind of what I'm saying. Make sure you look at your levels, look at your ears, look at your ears, look at your, look at your, ears. Look at your um, listen with you your ears. If you can look at your ears, then we're doing yeah. well. We can get a mirror, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we always have one. Oh, no, yeah. Look at your ears. <laughs> 
so good. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be quoted now. So how do you, how do you make so a good mix? Rain says, good. look at your ears. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm so I'm sorry. Actually, mate, it's going. Not so bad. I've just got to look in the ears, see how it is. <laughs> oh, we're trying to be serious here for um, no, Sonic Week. Me. Okay, John oh, Shay's porn sounds wrong. I, I always I, – so I – you guys have probably seen the, the memes where they talk about um, where you look at your waveforms and they look like songs, tracks look like sausages, right? And these days they're almost – because there's so much compression in tracks – I think I'll, I'll see if I can dig the meme up that we showed a few, a few probably last year or year before. It's um, the old was. Mm. In the, it's in the seventies and eighties that music was more dynamic. Um, oh, yeah. In terms of you, you'd have you know light and shade in your mix, and it's a lot more dynamic. And these days, everything is just just so compressed oh, and it's it's, tedious. It's, it's actually really annoying because you actually just tedious. you want you actually want to turn it off just so you can actually. Go and like clear your mind and have a oh. breather. It's literally it actually becomes to the point where the sausage is, you know, the compression sausage is so bad that you actually just need I, to turn it off. I listened to Radio One in the car. That's like the sort of main national radio station of, of pop music in this country uh, for about half an hour, and I was so utterly fed up of it. Oh. And and. Auto tune on absolutely everything. I and I know it's used as an effect, but it just drove me to distraction. I, I thought I can't listen to this anymore. Mm. I just I just can't. I, uh, I had to switch it off because I, I thought I, I'll yeah I'll listen to Radio One. So I'll see see what something current, something I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm, right. the, the end result of that was I don't want to know it. It was horrible. Mm. It was a really horrible listening experience. So I, I put Classic FM on instead. It was much nicer. Yeah, I mean, so like, we can like... give a big, big. There you go. I said we can give a big, big bit of advice. Is mm -hmm. look at your ears, otherwise you'll get a compression sausage. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, at, look at your, look at your ears. Look at, look at your ears. Listen Sit to on, your yeah. eyes. Oh, you'll get a compression <laughs> sausage. <laughs> Uh, so are these things like are they like you worms, Darren? <laughs> yeah, but playing on your bastard on the thing, looking at your ears, getting a compression sausage. <laughs> Who of us watching this right now? There's a scratch in their head. They're going, "WTF? What are these guys talking about?" Uh, <laughs> I've just watched this show, and these guys know what they're talking about. You've got to look at your ears. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Social. Yeah. Think about compression <laughs> sausages. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gets daft. Gets daft about the week. This, this, the this. most professional Aaron. show on the internet, right here, right now. <laughs> no, um, uh, my my. my um, You've just lost fifty subscribers, Rand. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, it doesn't worry me. Um, my my advice is uh, basically just um, find some music that you love. And everyone's got music that they love, and then chuck that into um, some sort of way that you can actually see the waveform. So, um, like Audacity or something like that. Chuck it in, and then have a look at the waveform. Just look at from the start of the track to the finish. You look at it as a whole, and you just look at all the different parts of the waveform, and just see how that looks to you. And then grab one of your tracks, and if it looks your track looks completely different to that um, in terms of dynamics then you know that you kind of need to make some changes. And I don't know, I kind of, I, 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 I think you can, there's definitely a time and a place to use compression, absolutely, because compression can be your friend. But I just think right now, a lot of the kiddies are, are probably over, overdoing yeah. the compression at the moment. So um, what are the chatties saying? You know they're just ignoring us because they actually don't, they don't even think it's probably, funny. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Popular music is all too perfect. Oh, yeah, yes. exactly. Corrosive. See, yeah. Matt, Mac is it's on the mistakes. Mac is on the money here. I absolutely agree with him. I have. I think Roland need to bring out an MX2 or an MX1 Pro or whatever you want to call it. I think they are. Yeah, just they are really overdue that. for a new mixer um, with more audio. Yep. They've inputs. probably give that up that yeah. era now, haven't they? Absolutely. Yeah, it's sixteen. Probably... Sixteen analog inputs. You know what Plenty like. of digital inputs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the money. Have a great absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Yep. I think we've even mentioned it here before as well. We, we've been waiting for them. You never know. It might be an AM thing. Um, 
Who knows? Who knows? I just, I don't know. I don't see Roland doing that again. They, they sort of like, it was in that um, our, our range, wasn't it? And then they sort of gone, I'll carry on with something else now. And it's it never evolved. Mm. No, I, I, I do see Roland doing it. Um, it just probably won't be what we're expecting. A bit like that last thing that they brought out, it, but, which it, I'm scratching yeah, my head. Yeah, it might, go, it might, it might move it to is. more like the MCs type stuff. Yeah. So go away from what they did and then move it into that sort of MC form. Uh, mm. It'll probably just be an MX1 in an MC form. Maybe. The Chatties is talking about Green Day um, and comparing it to Bohemian Rhapsody and then they kind of the conversation flowed on a little bit from there and they're saying um, that... <clears throat> if you ever look at the waveform of that Green Day, I can't remember what the Green Day song was that they talked about, but it would probably be one of their famous ones. Uh, that is an example of, you know, two extremes, the Bohemian Rhapsody, and, you know, waveform versus the, the Green Day one. And maybe the Green Day one is kind of the precursor to why everyone else kind of did it, you know, just to sort of... I mean, we listen to radio, right? And radio... Uh, are absolute shockers for doing compression because I don't know if you listen to mm. you listen well, it's if heavy you, limited, isn't it? If Just you listen watched. to the uh, the talkback guy, he's talking and he's got callers coming on, blah blah blah. And then the next thing you know, they they throw to an ad break, and then you're turning you're turning your radio volume down because it's just pumping through your speakers. But two seconds ago, it was actually the perfect volume to listening to the talkback. That sort of stuff absolutely pees me off to. The, and it's the reason why it's done like that is because they want the commercial uh, paying clients, their commercial uh, advertisers, to you know literally fill your car or wherever you're listening to the radio with you know their product. That's what they want. So yeah. Um, so don't do what radios yeah. do. Turn the radio off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's Silence is golden. Switch the radio off. <laughs> Yeah, right. So let's have, let's have a bit of a chat to the chatties. Why not? These guys don't get a good chat. So uh, let's start with, um, we'll start kind of up the top there. So uh, someone mentioned an MX2. It's called Tribble. <laughs> an MX2 with Zen, oh yeah, it was Max. At MX2 with Zencore. Mm, maybe, yeah, that could be interesting. Boulevard of Broken Dreams being a sausage, says Native VS. Yes. I don't remember that song too much. Um, yeah, we go. I, I thought there was laws that TVs had to abide by with in terms of compression, but I don't think it got as far as radios. Well, it didn't in my country anyway, because I'm still noticing it. Um, especially with this new digital audio. You, you notice it more because of the digital audio. Um, I don't know, your, in your parts of the world, are they going to start turning off the um, the transmitted radio soon and you'll just have digital audio so you won't have FM and AM anymore? They're going to stop making well, I think it's on the cards. Mm. That's what I've been told. I mean, we've got, we've got no analog television anymore. It's all digital TV. Um, that all got switched off. Mm. So I would have thought radio will go the same way. But it's a shame, really. Um, in some ways, because you know, long wave. I mean, just messing about with with old analog radios and short wave and long wave, and we all know the interesting sounds that you can get out of those things. Just turning recently, and that is that the music that you listen oh. to on Spotify and SoundCloud, SoundCloud and Bandcamp and things like that, we aren't hearing that music on radio. Um, so I'm I'm just really interested to to know kind of. I think there's a massive disconnect. Like, I understand how that music gets on radio. I understand how record deals work. I mean, we don't need to talk about that. But what I'm saying is that the majority of people aren't listening to the stuff that gets on radio. They're listening to something else. And you find that the music is actually very disconnected in, in terms of what mm. commercial people want us to listen to versus what we actually really want to listen to. And I actually think the divide is actually getting bigger and bigger as the freedom of the internet becomes more of a sort of a household thing, you know, um, because you think think back in the 80s, we had TV and we had radio and we had cassettes and vinyl and CDs. Uh, so it was a bit more of a controlled distribution. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas now we can pretty much 
turn things on, turn things off. We don't have to watch ads. We've got things like Netflix. We we can listen to whatever music we want. Um, and if we don't like it, we just don't listen to it. We, it's, you know, it's really more, we're, it's actually quite powerful for us, which is actually really good. So yeah, it's interesting, I think. I suppose I'm I'm in a position where I can talk to a, a lot of young adults. I'll call them so. That particularly as a, a key stage four tutor group, my, my tutor group are, are 15, 16 year olds. Uh, I've got six formers as well, and you talk to them about music, and, and a lot of them are actually pretty disillusioned with the whole situation. They 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 don't like it. A lot of an awful lot of them, particularly those who are, who have an active interest in music are listening to to much much older music music i mean there's obviously the 80s is very fashionable again but mm. going back and listening to a lot of the music from the 1980s you know i said i had got no internet earlier in the week that actually had a sort of a plus point i went out for a walk at about eight o'clock to about half past nine uh, i went to a, a local park and had a walk around and there was a big group of young people Forgetting social distancing and all that, but they've got one of those old-fashioned ghetto blaster things, um, uh, and we're listening to. It was like they were playing the, the worst of the eighties, mm. um, but it was it was all it was all eighties. There was nothing current that they were playing at all. So it went, we there was Bohemian Rhapsody. There was Take on Me by Aha. There was Dead or Alive. There was there was all all sorts of these thinking. What the, these these kids? What they're listening to? You know, they're listening to my youth. Not mm. their own. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because I think, oddly enough, like we say, that, that music, that it, it's actually engaging to listen to, whereas you put the radio on and it's just like like was said in the chat, it's just drivel. Mm. I think there's, I think that's also quite sad that, that there's, I mean, there's got to, there's got to be g good music there coming is. through. There's got, you know, young people, there's the, the, and there is. It's there just is. that the main radio stations are They're not, are not playing, playing it. it. No. Apart and the from thing is, Radio Six here in, in in Britain, but the thing is, Andy, they is play interesting stuff. But. Whenever I bring this conversation up, and I bring it up with my friends, I bring it up with you guys, I bring it up on social media, everyone agrees. So if everyone's agreeing with that, like you're going to get the odd song that you will like on the radio, but it's actually starting to become rarer than the norm. Like I remember when I was a kid in the '80s, and I was probably the '80s for me was, um, you know, I was I. When I was uh, in 1980, I was nine years old. So that, that gives you an idea of how old I was in the 80s. So when I was a kid in the 80s, we just, there was a thing where we actually used to turn the radio on on a Saturday morning and listen to the FM channel and you would actually be excited about what they would play because it would be um, your favourite songs that you're dying to hear again. It, it, it was just a different phenomenon. And I think <clears throat> we, don't, um, we don't get that. We don't get that sort of surprise anymore from the mm -hmm. radio, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, I don't know, and I don't know if it's um, anything's fault. I just think that this is how society has progressed. So, um, does that mean the radio has to change? Does that mean the radio is maybe doesn't have a future? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think radio's still got a future because I think I think we still like the fact that it's a hands off. Um, distribution thing like for example when you're driving a car you can't you're not really too yeah. distracted when you're listening to the radio so it's actually quite a good a good medium to have um, so whereas you can't watch <laughs> well, you shouldn't be <laughs> you can't watch YouTube while you're driving a car because that might not be too good Andy what's happening with Andy he's going hey. whoa <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I was getting drunk for a second I was then. out then fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, off this down the line of burdock oh jeez um, Human Error said that um, it's because kids are making music on cheap PCs. Mm. Sorry about that. I think, what is, is it, um, I don't know. I actually don't want to mention any, any musicians because I don't, I could be getting someone pissed off. There are some songs out there that absolutely are in exactly what he said. There are some younger people who have made songs on a PC and they're probably sitting with a million dollars in their bank account right now because of that, and you know, or a laptop or whatever. So great if that's what you've done. 
And if people have bought it, that's that's awesome. I actually, I'm not against that at all. Actually, I actually, I'm not really against that. But what I'm, what I'm kind of saying is that that I'm talking about the disconnect, about what we actually like. I want over the week, just catch yourself, find out when you're listening to music, what it is that you're listening to, and then just stop yourself for a second and go, and go. How am I actually? How's that being delivered to me? Is that have I gone to an old MP3 folder and am I playing that? Is it a Spotify? Is it a, am I literally just getting, am I that old and I'm getting like vinyls and, <laughs> no, I'm not just joking. But like catch yourself and um, and just, you'll see what I mean. There's a disconnect between what is being delivered to you uh, or forced down your throat commercially versus what you're actually listening to. Definitely. It's not an age thing either because I've talked to young people about the same thing. They agree. They actually think, what they're saying to me is they think the radio is playing the worst music that is currently being made. That, that's kind of the, what the young generation are saying to me, <laughs> which I think is sad. The, so they're saying that it's, it's an example. And we kind of feel the same thing. We're kind of saying it sounds like you said, Andy, it sounds like drivel, right? We kind of feel the same thing. So <clears throat> it's not all music is like that, but like that kind of disconnect between what we actually do listen to versus what we're actually being fed. And... The chatties are kind of definitely <laughs> talking about this. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think it's gone worse the less we're buying music. The more we're just, because at one time, mm. you heard it on the radio and stuff like that. You, you went out and bought the music to listen to. Mm. These days, there's so much out there that's just free and or, or nicked or whatever that it's just literally saturated yeah, um, it's actually quite funny because a lot of people still listen to MP3s as well. And it might be because, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever, they they probably uh, ripped their CD collection to MP3s. Um, I remember doing it to OGG format uh, because it was supposed to be reasonably lossless. Um, and I, I created a script on my then PC that just automatically did it. Uh, and I just sat there and fed CD after CD after CD after CD. Um, a bit like you, Darren, how you got hundreds of CDs behind you, right? Um, I fed all my CDs slowly, slowly, painstakingly into it. It, it. I even created a little script where it actually went onto the internet and pulled the CD data down off the web to try and populate all the tracks and things like that at the same time. It doesn't always work, but... Um, yeah, I did that, and so I do find myself listening to that quite a bit, which is kind of static when you think about it, because that hasn't grown since my last CD purchase, which would have been a while ago now. Um, but yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, it's harder to find CDs unless you go hunting for them. Well, you, you kind can't of just pop down to your local rec. That's it. You kind of force. Shop. You're forcing yourself to buy it now. It's it's literally a. Uh, it's a, it's kind of like a romantic decision about buying a CD, whereas before it was kind of, I must get the latest album from blah, 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 so you go out and buy it, whereas now it's kind of like, I don't know, I want that on CD because I cherish that artist or whatever. It's kind of a different thing. <clears throat> also, I think someone mentioned in the chat a little bit back about uh, just buying random CDs or vinyl um, due to the cover art because at mm. the time... You know, the radio only had mainly the top 40 and then you had your specific channels that did different genres. But other than that, you had to go into a record shop and scan through loads of records, albums and things. And if something took your eye um, that looked interesting that could be in your genre, you'd end up having to buy it because there was no other way of listening to it. <laughs> Whereas now they'll just come home, type it into Google, YouTube, Spotify, whatever, and listen to one track and that's it. It's no buying of an album. It's just... Uh, I think someone else has just said that uh, it's fleet. I think it was uh, Inverted Popes just said, music is fleeting. You'll listen to the track and probably never listen to it again. Yeah. It's yeah. entirely disposable, which is sad. I, I agree with him. It's a bit like the, you know, the Facebooky sort of thing where it scrolls. You listen to it, it scrolls. It's like scrolling up, isn't it? It's a bit like the, the five-second fame, yeah. five-second bit of fame. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Because you think about it, like we... We as musicians, we might have spent a month, a week, some cases a day, some cases a year, writing a track, and blood, sweat, and mm -hmm. tears go into it, and then um, 
it, that is the potential outcome of it, that it's listened to in a fleet moment, like it's bang, moved on. In some cases, no, yeah, if you've made a track five is, minute track, they're not even listening to five minutes of it. Yeah, they've skipped through it. So they've, they've, oh, no, this is getting boring. I'm skipping ahead. So they haven't even listened to the whole thing, the whole skipping thing, you know. The playhead is yeah, no longer. They just want the, they want the, the build up, the big, the big, you know, bait section. Yep. The melody, and then that's it. Yep. Not all the time that you've doing an intro and working on the little tiny sounds and the little swish noise that you think spent hours on just getting it from one ear to the next. Yeah. They don't hear that because they're hearing it on mono or on an iPhone. So. Is, <laughs> is that because we've become shallow? As a, is that a shallow thing? Have we become so, like, we're so impatient with things. We don't. We've got to have it all now. Everything's got to be delivered. We've got to. I want to go. I don't want the joke. I don't want the build up. I want to go straight for the punchline. It's, it's a shallow thing. Yeah, if isn't it's it? too fast, if it's moved on, it's mm. fast, fast, fast. Move on to something else. Fast, fast, fast. Move on to something else. Yeah. And there's no reminiscence neither for uh, you know there's no uh, for like saving a track or a, an album and going back to it and listening to it all the time. It just mm. literally gets thrown in the bin. Yeah. You can guarantee within a year. Half the tracks they listen to in January, they won't even remember they've even listened to them, or or even some of them even paid for them. It'll have just got chucked to the back of the the folder somewhere, and they've, they've never listened to it again. Sasquatch is saying nothing sounds like mm. good vinyl or tape. I agree. I agree. The, the, I mean, the forty eight k technical aspect of vinyl, I think, has always been that sort of little bit of extra quality. But I, I just think the whole the whole thing about the needle vibrating. I think that that's mm. kind of that's kind of like a, a special thing, um, yeah. It's just well, having to like distortion. Take that's nice. take take the single out, and then you know having to do that, and then place that onto your onto your onto your record deck. Yeah, and carefully. actually take time to listen to it. Yeah, you're doing it carefully yeah. too, and yeah. take time to listen to it. And you're reading it, but now it's not. Yeah, all all the information on. On there and on. Well, this is not an album, but uh, yeah. this is. In fact, this is an old. This is Olympia. You want my love? Back in when my eyesight's about ninety-two, I think. <laughs> so, so it's, it's uh, a proper and, house. Great, great baseline on this. Andrew's saying we're not shallow. There is too many things to process. Mm. So we're. So this is to do with people being time poor. I don't know if I agree with that. I, I kind of feel that people use the time poor as an excuse for bad behavior. Like, for example, uh, I haven't seen you, I haven't spoken to you for a while because I've been busy. That word, I've been busy, you know, I think is, is well overused these days. <coughs> people are busy. I think everyone Yeah, I didn't busy. have time to write a chat last week. I was busy. Yeah. I think we, <laughs> we had this kind of... I actually was. <laughs> well, I mean, what Darren was saying before, when, when mm. you actually sat there... And you pulled the the vinyl out of the sleeve, and there was kind of it was it was kind of like a little a little celebration, a little process that you went through. It was it was an enjoyment thing. You probably had a you probably went and made yourself a cuppa. You know what I mean? Like you got your headphones out. Ritual. Yeah. It's a ritual. Yeah, we kind of yeah. aren't, we we are like missing out on doing these things for ourselves. These are kind of forms of meditation in a way, aren't they? They're kind of downtime things that we did, and this whole. Getting stuff have, too quick. Yeah. Uh, that, I think, not a lot of people sit down and listen to music like they used to do now. They're always doing something whilst they're listening to music. Mm. You know, you used to actually yeah, sit down and listen to music. It's audio wallpaper, or, wallpaper, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, now it's just put it on in the background whilst you're doing other things. So that's it's why a, it never really gets listened to in there. Yeah, that's a really good point. We are kind of, I actually think I'm, I'm probably to blame as well for that we actually find that we're listening we all do, to we? music as a secondary or a, an entertainment thing in the background whilst we are doing something else hmm. Hmm. there's nothing wrong yeah. with that there's nothing and, and, wrong with and, and, that and, and, could be inspirational no it's just that <clears throat> you don't hear the track how you know it, it, when you put your album on a uh, cd tape or vinyl you sat there you yeah. were, you were deliberately putting it on to listen to so sit back listen to or but now it's not. It's just click. That, that'll do, and I'll carry on with this and the music yeah. playing in the background. Yeah. Mm. A bit like the first time you had a skiff and you sat down and listened to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> That's a bit different, isn't it? <laughs> 
That's taking us back a few years, isn't it, gentlemen? <laughs> I've got no problem with the idea of, of having music on whilst doing something else. I, I think oh, no, either do I. That's a yeah. really, really uh, important no, no, no. way of, of, of consuming music in that sense. But I also agree with you, Darren, the, the actual uh, act of actively listening is something that I think people do less and less. I mean, because obviously it's, you want to listen to a, a, an album, it's going to take 40 minutes from beginning to end, and you've got to put that 40 minutes aside from somewhere, sit mm. down, put it on, yeah, and, yeah. and listen to it. Yeah. But well, it, do, I, 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 I well, still you're do. listening to music I, I enjoy or doing playing it. music, don't you? There's two different things. I miss the mm -hmm. art. I, I, I agree with Wagoo. I miss the art, especially yes. vinyl, because art, a vinyl artwork is is really really big you know like darren was showing before it's yeah. like a, it's a big piece of art you know it's um well, it's really what boring. is it about 12 inches darren 12 inches square isn't it um a vinyl? Well, we up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you set that up, <laughs> well, yeah. no it's actually i'd say i'd say that's about 15 because <laughs> i think that <laughs> That's Sonic Boom. Yeah. But, the, but uh, yeah, I mean, you've got this, all this. Yeah. The, don't well, get that now. Even with the ones where you opened them up as well. They're not just the ones that was just asleep yeah. but in front and back. The ones where you opened them oh, up. Oh, they're under there. I'm gate, not looking at them as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, gate, gatefold. There, there is kind of. There Mis is a, misplaced childhood by Marillion. Having a good look and seeing what all the symbols were that were all over it. All the things that are mentioned in the lyrics of the song. Can, can you find can you find things in the cover art that's actually mentioned in the lyrics of the album? Yeah. Oh, it's been ages. And 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 it that that in itself is just a, a, a like you said, our work of art, a, a thing of joy. I loved it. And there, there are there are there are others. What about albums that we bought just because of the cover? We had no idea what we were actually buying, but we just simply oh. loved the cover. Just about to say the same thing, but in yeah. a different with a twist, Andy. And what I reckon you should do, just to, for shits and giggles, and it would probably actually be interesting to see the result, is find a track or an album that you've listened to but you've never actually owned the physical uh, vinyl or CD or whatever. Try and get the vinyl if you can because it'll be – and I'm talking mm -hmm. about one that would have been released you know, back in the day when they were doing these properly. Um, and just – and. You've already sort of experienced the listening. You've enjoyed it. You've already got a perception of what the music is about and you've kind of drifted off and had thoughts. And then it would be an interesting reaction to see how the artist's impression with the art is compared to what you thought it would be. That would be a very interesting I'm thing. I'm trying, to th I'm trying to think whether, that, whether I've got anything on tape which I recorded off somebody else, but and I don't know what the artwork is. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm sure, that, I'm sure you'll find one. I reckon it'd be interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to give you my contribution of an, of an album that I bought because of the artwork, because it just intrigued me so much. Okay. Mm. And, and, and that was an album called, oh my, I'll get the number wrong. 20, is it 20 Jazz Funk Greats by Throbbing Gristle. Um, because the name <laughs> Throbbing Gristle made me chuckle for a start. Yeah, behave, Darren. Mm. <laughs> and the, it was this, it was just this, this picture of, the, of these, of all these people in, in suits and, and, and sort of like evening dresses. I thought it looked like a, it looked like a, a cheesy romantic album from the, from the 1960s. And, and it just looked, I thought, this just doesn't work. You know, the, the name at the top doesn't match the picture on the front. And I couldn't, get, and then I got it home, and and it was this almost unlistenable noise. It was amazing. Mm. It was an, an absolutely, an absolutely like, oh my god, what a visceral experience it was listening to that for the first time. <laughs> Not easy listening, and the covers also nice and past. Well, it's actually, I found out that, that it was photographed at Beachy Head, which is a notorious suicide spot in this country. So even the photograph itself has got a dark, sinister twist. Even though it just looks like a load of um, bankers out for a picnic, <laughs> it's great. It yeah. really is cool. Yeah, it would be. Um, no, was... folks, did I get the number right? Was it is it twenty jazz or is it thirty? Uh, jazz? I can't remember. I, I think twenty think... jazz funk great. I think. I was. think anyone's mentioned it. Wigu was saying they listen <laughs> to Japanese music, and the problem with Japanese music is that 
that countries kind of they they really uh, eat up the latest technology, don't they? So they probably they drop mm. things very quickly. So like the vinyl sort of whole vinyl world over there would probably be quite boutique and quite niche and almost very retrospective in that sense. But I get I guarantee you there'll be there'll be a whole Japanese culture. There'll be a pop culture with vinyl. I guarantee. You. Um, and they'll, and they'll be very niche. But yeah, in terms of mainstream Japanese music, you'd probably find it hard. It'll be all CDs or or not even that. I guess these mm. days the the version of your your album cover these days would probably be the band's website, wouldn't it? I guess that's probably what it would be. So you you, you can download you artwork, go to, can't you? But it's not the same thing. Yeah, you go to the website. That would be kind of what you'd do, or you'd. Uh, I don't. I know with Spotify, they're starting to do that sort of semi-animated, you know, small sort of short movie skit thing that they do with some of the the mainstream artists. Um, I don't know if I like that, but I mean, it, yeah, it could head in an interesting way. I definitely think the art oh, side yeah. of music needs to come back. Definitely. Yeah, it's not gone completely. You're not looking at the art. Yeah, it's not like taking out your tape and CD where you actually see it. Well, isn't there isn't mm. there a with an MP3? Isn't there a way that you can uh, embed or link a JPEG or something? It, it's kind of like the yeah you can yeah you can get it if you play it in the car and everything. But you don't. It's not the same, is it? You don't. You don't really. It's a little tiny, almost thumbnail size thing, isn't it? Oh, but I like it, it though. Yeah, I like it when you when it's in your car and it shows up with something. I I just I can't stand it when it says it says unknown album, unknown artist. That, it's a great name for an album, actually. Oh yeah, it's got to tell you what it is. But I'm not worried. You not you don't worry about the art so much because you're never really looking at it. Oh, yeah, it's just what's coming out of the speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone mentioned. I, I don't know if where was it. I, someone mentioned about skipping through tracks, and I don't know if see if I can dig it up because I think it was a good point. Where was it? Um, where you're sort of skipping through the music and you don't get that sort of build up of that point. Of the song where it might actually be the peak or the or the bridge or something like that, and you kind of miss the. Oh, here we go. So it was Paul that said it. Um, if a musician skips around in a track, they may be missing an inspiring section of a song that could be the catalyst for a really good idea that isn't derivative. Yeah. See, I like that. Was a really good point by Paul there, and that's actually kind of. Um, why we were sort of saying that you don't, you didn't really did that, you didn't really did that, you didn't really do that back in the days when you were kind of like what Darren was saying when you're putting vinyl on, you sort of sat there and let it play. Uh, Sasquatch is asking, does anyone get the rise of K pop, BTS, bollocks? Yeah. Um, no, because I, I don't know what it is. Sorry. <laughs> it's the Korean. I'm that, missing something. K pop. Yeah, it's the Korean part of the pop industry. I mean, obviously, Gangman oh. Style is, an ex you know, is uh, is probably your link. You've probably heard Gangman Style, right? Which was what, well, ten, yes. five, ten years ago now. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard some stuff, and it's not my cup of tea. But you know, that's like, I mean, I don't really like hip hop either. So it's a genre in itself, isn't it? K-pop. Yeah. You know, we all have it. We all have our tastes in music. Some people absolutely. I, I know some people that absolutely love it. And what they, I, I don't know if it's the music that they love. I think it's the whole visual side of it that they love. It's the whole, you know, the young ladies dressed up in scantily clothed miniskirts and that, that kind of whole, you know, that's the, the sex yeah. sort of attraction to it. I think that's what they love about it. But some people do. That's cool. Um, I think that the Japanese music is more experimental electronic stuff is awesome, which is what Wagu probably was talking about. It's actually really, really cool, some of that Japanese stuff. Uh, a lot of ambient, a lot of, you know, experimental, you know, progressive type electronica. It's pretty cool. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know how we talk about Berlin School being a thing, you know, because of craft work <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised in 20, 30 years we'll be saying, about it'll be a name. There'll be a name for it. I'm, I'm sure there is already. I don't know what it is because um, I'm not up on it. But I'm sure there'll be. We'll be talking about Japanese music as an influence, definitely, because it's pretty cool. And if you haven't listened to it, I definitely recommend that you go try it out. Um, mm. 
Yeah, so, so corrosive beer is saying that they have Japanese bar, listening bars in Japan. And um, I reckon that's a really cool idea. So it's not, so when we're saying that, it's, um, I've heard about these, it's not like a nightclub where you, you go in and you, and you come out and your ears are ringing um, because they've played the music like at the same decibel as what a, a jet playing flies over your head at. It's more just a, like a, it's a chill sort of thing. And um, you can actually go and sit down with headphones and uh, you can, you know, play stuff that way. There's also live performances and it's kind of more a, um, a loungy sort of feel to it, which I like. It's pretty cool. I would, I'd love to go to one. I haven't been, obviously, COVID and that. We can't travel these days, but... So Paul's saying it's just like new metal movement, the industrial movement, the grunge movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's people that like that. I don't mind it. I'm not going to say I'm a lover um, because I think there's some really, really good musicians in there. I mean, if you think about, for example, heavy metal, um, now some people will disagree with me, but if you think about heavy metal, there's some, there's some absolutely brilliant musicians that have come out of the heavy metal genre. Uh, and big bands have come out of that, and I think we, 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 we'll, we, we'll, the world benefited from that movement of music. So I'm definitely not gonna, I'm not gonna knock that. I mean, I, I listen. I'll give you an example. What, what would you guys classify ACDC as? What sort of genre? Would that be rock and roll, or would that be metal? <laughs> metal. Be metal, right? Yeah, they go with metal. Would they probably be one of the the grandfathers of metal? Wouldn't they? Those yeah. guys. Yep. And if you listen, so do you remember when you first heard your first ACDC song and how you reacted to it? Yes. Hmm. Now think yeah, about my cousin made me. My cousin made me listen to Back to Black. I think I was that was the time when I was listening to a lot of Ultravox, OMD, Depeche Mode, and he was, mm. oh, you got to listen to this. This is right, and I absolutely hated it. Yeah, it was. It was. Very... I hated it, and and actually. I like it now. I quite like yeah. ACDC because it's actually dead funny, isn't it? The, 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 the music's funny. The song, Yeah, I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for ACDC, really, if I'm honest. It, it's weird, though, <laughs> because like, I remember the first time I heard it and it was kind of almost like uh, it was like I was d committing a sin by listening to it. Like it was actually quite invasive and in your face and it was almost, um, you know, it was, like you said, it was kind of, it was that. <laughs> I just thought it was hackneyed drivel. Yeah. I, I just honestly back then I just thought, oh, this has all been done before. It's tedious, not interested. Yep. Um, and and actually, of course, that was me just being blinkered. If I'm being honest, uh, but, I, I, if it didn't back in the day, if it didn't go bleep, I wasn't interested. Um, but but with, and, with and now I'm a bit more open minded. With time, it I, I fell in love with it, and obviously it didn't take long. It probably only took a few months or maybe a year or something, and I fell in love with it because I actually started to realise. They, they are actually really good musicians. I mean, uh, you know, the young family, the young brothers, Malcolm and Angus, and, you know, back in the early days it was Bon Scott who was the lead singer of ACDC, who was the one that mm. died. Uh, that is a, that, that's a really simple musical, like if you're looking at it from a musical um, composing point of view, very, very simple, very, very simple, but sometimes the simplest things are so, so good. And that, I don't know if you guys know this, but they are making more money now than what they originally made when those albums first came out. So they're really? making so oh. much money out of those original <coughs> ACDC albums because they just played, they played at sporting events, they played all over the world. Like they're just ringing through stadiums, that sort of stuff. Like you think of like that ACDC song, like Thunderstruck or whatever it's called, that big mm -hmm. long intro with the guitar, sort of sequency sounding guitar and the guy going thunder and the big bass drum going like that that's they do that at the start of like soccer games football games that's you know gridiron games in the us they're making massive amounts of of money from it but today we kind of feel that that's probably more mainstream would you agree like that music is not it's not on the outer that's more a mainstream it's more accepted isn't that interesting mm. so we've we've become you know mellowed okay. to that Akadaka, yeah. It's a good yeah. one. They didn't use many synths in ACDC. It's, it's 
there's no link to ACDC in synths really. A bit, they use samplers and stuff. There's a little bit, but not a lot. They're really just guitar, bass, and drums, aren't they? And vocals, when it comes down to yeah. it. Whereas I, see that's, for me, I probably would say, um, back in the day when ACDC, when I was first listening to them, I used to like things like bands like Van Halen and the prog rock bands like Yes and um, Marillion and Genesis and like they were to me more, they, they were much, much more to listen to because they had, they had more, there was more music in it. There was more, um, you know, more band members. There was synths, there was, you know, Hammond organs, there was, you know, flutes and like, all this crazy stuff, right? Even Led Zeppelin, you know, they, they were proggy. So um, whereas ACDC were very kind of, yeah, weird. And this is back in, you know, when they first, when I first listening to them. And I was quite young too, so. Young and impressionable. impressionable. The last time I listened to the top 40 on the radio, Wagoo says, was this Christmas. It was full of Christmas songs from the 70s. Oh God, you poor thing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> did you, what did you I haven't it? listened to it for, <laughs> I haven't listened to it for years and years and years, Wagoo. I really haven't. I've no idea what's number one. And I've got very little interest because I no Does one number one ever mean the same anymore? Yeah, they sold three records. Brilliant, number one. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's it's, it's all yeah. it's all become. So I think I think that that's the sad thing, you know. I mean, if you had a number one single, you were guaranteed a a, a big selling album, and you could make a lot of money mm, back yeah. in the nineteen eighties from that. Uh, and you could make yeah. a lot of money off it, even off those sorts 90s. of sales. N n yeah, not anymore, not anymore. And I think it's really, really sad. Yeah, true. Max just and, said, and "No one ever remembers number yeah. one." I mean, say go, may go, great. <laughs> not, oh, you mean no one ever remembers number ones anymore? So, if, so when you guys are talking about things like XTC and uh, those yeah. sort of groups, like I, I definitely was there as well. I'm only but making plans for. I have to say, my Sorry. first, my first real um, kind of introduction to that sort of side of music was Joy Division. I absolutely was mm. emphatic over Joy Division. Absolutely loved them, and I actually I went all the way through, you know, the late seventies, early eighties, and you know, obviously I was devastated when Ian Curtis died, and I remember it like yesterday. And um, at first, I actually hated New Order. I hated them because they were playing Joy Division songs, and I mean, I you know, you just don't you don't really understand, right? You don't understand. They are they are Joy Division, just not with Ian. That they were more than entitled to play those songs. They wrote them, um, but at first I hated them. And that first album they brought out, I hate it. I love it now, but I hated it back then. It's kind of weird. It's really, really weird how we go through these kind of thoughts. I missed it. I, I actually, I, I missed it. I mean, I would. I mean, so I'm, I think I'm a little bit older than you. I mean, Ian Curtis died in 1980. Yeah. Um, I'd have been 11 years old then. Uh, I, I, it didn't impact on me at all. I mean, I remember. I mean, first being my first awareness of New Order was obviously um, Blue Monday. That was 1982, and uh, I think or 83, and and, and listening to to New Order uh, every now and again, I, I'd hear a Joy Division track and just think that's rubbish. Don't like it. It's, mm. it's just you can't sing. Moving on, and <laughs> and now, <clears throat> I mean honestly, now I, I I can't I can't listen to New Order. I, I just it just. Ugh. <laughs> I just can't listen to it, I, but I, I love Joy Division. Uh, later on, now I've gone and discovered it for myself, and and just thought that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic music, you know. Um, uh, no, I'm. Uh, oh. What about is, Age, what about Age of Consent? You surely you could listen to Age of Consent in Power, Corruption, and Lies. That's the greatest track ever by New Order. Surely. I'd probably say Blue Monday would probably be my second favourite. But, yeah, Age of Consent. Oh, that is incredible, that track. Mm. Mm. Even to this day, I still love it. I never get sick <laughs> of that track. Um, no, I agree with you. I, I mean, okay, so for me, I started really young listening to music, probably because of my dad. And because uh, my dad had, like, mm. we're talking about rituals, right? Where my dad had this thing where he would, um, you know, we'd get up in the morning on the weekend and he'd go and pull some vinyl out and, Play it, and the house was full of music. So he'd, he'd be putting things like Led Zeppelin and 
Pink Floyd and all the 70s sort of stuff was happening, you know, for me as a young kid. Um, but he, so what he did with me is he used to take me to the record stores and uh, being a kid of, what was I, nine, eight, nine, whatever, I didn't have any money. So if I wanted a record, I'd have to beg my parents to get me one. And they would have, they would heavily influence that decision. Like, oh, what do you want that rubbish for? You can't, you know, I'm not letting you get that. But one day dad said to me, and I think I was probably probably eight or something. Uh, he said to me, "You can you can get a, get yourself a record. What do you want to get?" And I was um, I had no idea what to get. I was just like, "Oh wow, this is like you know, this is so cool!" Running around the record store looking at stuff, and I picked up uh, Joy Division Unknown Pleasures. That was my mm -hmm. first first ever <coughs> vinyl that I ever ever owned, and my dad didn't like it. And I could tell that he didn't like it, but he actually, he absolutely loves it now. But back in the day, he went at first, he didn't like it, I could tell. Because it was really, when you think about Joy Division, they kind of came from that punk scene. And then they kind of, they mm. kind of went on their own sort of, it was kind of a subset of punk. I don't know what you would call it. There's probably a name for it. Um, people like the New Wave. Yeah, whatever. But um yeah, he didn't like it. And I remember when I played it, uh, he wouldn't let me play it for a little while because he didn't like it. He'd go, oh, I'll take that rubbish off. Uh, so when I'd play it, I'd have to play it when he wasn't home or when, you know, my mum was out doing something in the house and the house was free and I could play it on my own. So it took a little while for me to sort of get used to it. But I I don't know, I kind of, that that because they were my first, I kind of, I followed that whole, you know, that whole process through late seventies, early eighties. And then, yeah, um, I didn't really like where Joy Division went. Um, at the end, like when Curtis died, they were, they'd, so, so I don't know if you guys remember, but he, they were about to tour the US. And um, I think that's kind of when he, he did what he did. He was, just, it, he was crumbling under the pressure of everything, but they, they made this album called Steel at the time and uh, it was kind of like a live album. And there was some tracks on there that it was heading in this, yeah, a different direction. I, I wouldn't call it new age, new sorry, new wave. It would be, yeah, I don't know what it is, progressive. It's probably progressive of some sort. Um, and then obviously once he died, then New Order formed and they did that open, the, uh, what was that, the first album, Movement, which was basically a whole bunch of, mm -hmm. um, older Joy Division tracks that never got released. And uh, it wasn't until they did Power, Corruption and Lies that you actually started to really hear New Order without Ian Curtis's influence for the first time. And that was a really, really good album. Um, a lot of people don't rate that album as much as some of their other New Order albums that were released. But I, I think that album was a really, really good album. And I think it took them a long time to make another good album New Order, um, it probably wasn't until that, I think it was the Go album, which was kind of a very rocky sort of sounding album. It's when they when they were more, when, when Bernard was able to sort of play guitar properly and he had um, Gillian doing the sort of real sort of guitar synthy sort of um, rhythm backups, that's kind of when Jordan, you could see, sorry, not Jordan, but uh, New Order being more true to their roots. That was their... That was their roots. But this whole disco era that they went through, I don't reckon they really enjoyed it. They did they, they did in interviews and they mm. talked about how they had influences from Kraftwerk and um, Giorgio Moroder. And, and so they do have that kind of, that disco influence definitely. But um, I kind of felt they more... Arthur Baker, wasn't it? Arthur Baker produced a lot of the... Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I forget now the details are all a bit wishy-washy in my head. If you ever want to know what what they were influenced by, there's an album that they brought out called Back to Mine, which is actually just all the songs that they used to listen to of the time. So go check that out because it's actually really interesting. You'll find... Um, yeah, in, in Blue Monday, for example, this, the, uh, there's a sample in Blue Monday which they stole from a Kraftwerk song. Well, they didn't steal it, but they just sampled it, right? So you could see that that influence, that's, there's the evidence there. Mm. It's, it's right in your face. And also there's, um, they talked about some drum beats uh, in some of their music. Um, 
which you can actually see in like I think there's a Donna Summer song that they they took the drum beat from that and mangled it a little bit, but it was pretty much the same and used it in some of their songs. So their their influences were really quite vivid and you know, really quite translated directly into music that you, that we would probably never know unless, you know, they didn't share that information. And at the time, when when they were releasing albums, they weren't very social, they weren't very uh, they were quite often snubby to the, the media, <laughs> which I liked. I thought it was cool. Um, but they were actually quite rude. <coughs> they didn't like to do interviews. They didn't really like to talk much about stuff. In fact, I remember once we, we, we were watching a, I don't know if it was on the, on the BBC or on the, whatever it was, they were talking about the lyrics and what did the lyrics mean? And I think Bernard said, oh, it's just a bit of crap. We don't really, <laughs> I don't think he used the word crap, but I think he said, <laughs> It's a, it's a bit of nonsense. They don't mean anything, and like people were getting really like upset about it because some of these songs that meant a lot to them, and they they were really reading into the lyrics, and, and he was just going, "Oh, this is just, just a, a whole bunch of random words, really." That <laughs> was so cheeky of them. Uh, oh, a big thank you to Mark M for the uh, the the ten pounder. Um, yeah, be good. What have we been doing? Streaming for two and two hours and twenty minutes. Be Completely went off topic from Star Wars, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, I dropped strains for electronic music anyway because uh, it was like, and, and then I moved back to sort of things like, um, oh, craft work and stuff. Because uh, I think I was just listening to like just the general pop, but I wasn't that interested in it. And then I think about 84, house music was sort of just bubbling in the UK and mm. I heard it on, the, on a late night mm. st radio station and that's where i sort of got hooked into that sort of electronic style of music which led me to the pet shop boys that were, were out but i hadn't really paid any attention to them yeah. got hooked on them and it sort of spanned from there and then i sort of split into both ways sort of like anything electronic any you know any sort of electronic music mm. i sort of was looking forward and back because i mean i only got into omd later mm. i mean yeah. look, omd had been going yeah, for ages the forward and back. i figured even yeah you know yeah, so I sort of went forward and back following the two them. electronic musics. Yeah, I, I got into OMD late yeah, 80s, yeah. late eighties, um, and yeah, like I think I, I don't even th I don't think it was an older guy that got me into OMD. Either. No, I think it, I think no. it was um, later on. Yeah, um, and, oh, the, and then obviously, that. but yeah, Pet Shop Boys, uh, definitely big Pet Shop Boys, big fan of them, big fan of them. Guy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sort of the first electronic band that you've seen that where there wasn't like loads of people on stage, it was just the two of them and one with a keyboard and one singing, and that was sort of like basically all he got. And it's like that's cool. And they're like, you know, it's it sort of broke the barriers between electronic music and being pop as well at the same time and getting well, into the charts. Yeah, Pet Shop Boys weren't the first to do that sort of thing. I mean, I I, I give you Soft Cell. No, but that's when I sort of Yazoo. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, I went and, back then and, and yeah. started to, to look at them. <clears throat> So was was sort of, it was almost a cliche, boys. wasn't it? Show me that. Yeah, I'm with. I'm it's with. Sort of show me that. Yeah. that I'm with Mac. Was. I'm with Mac. I never got into Erasure. I, I just I could I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it was about it. I just never really enjoyed it. I tried. I tried. I you know I definitely <laughs> tried. Um, I don't know. Mm. Uh, big thank you to Sasquatch for the five pounder. Uh, I will definitely buy a beer. I've actually run out. They, I only had two. They're empty. I've been drinking and talking to you guys. <laughs> so I definitely do that. Yeah. Um, and then and Kate Bush. Yes. Yeah, yeah Kate Bush was good. Got into her really got into her really, really late. I mean mum used to listen to her on record. Um and, and it was like, Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> Too and then for me. <laughs> years down the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the Pet Shop Boys. It's always hard to work at first, isn't it, Kate Bush? Pet Shop Boys were pretty camp, weren't they? But I yeah. still man, I still enjoyed them. Um, Go just... West there, Go West album. That type of stuff was a bit. Yeah, yeah. it was. That was a bit sort of. I liked the early ones. Spandex, like, please, get actually. your spandex on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please, actually, yeah. The first and, um, couple. The first couple. Being... Yeah. Oh, um, yes. West End yep. Girls. I remember when I first heard that song. I just yeah, I, Suburbia. I absolutely loved that. With the sample of the dogs barking and everything. <laughs> Hey, I bet you there's one that you guys haven't thought of. Did you guys listen to Grace Jones? She's she was the uh, 
um, <sighs> the French Negro Jamaican lady that yeah, starred yeah, in it. Gross, she was, yeah. she was in a view to the rhythm. She to was, the yeah, view to a kill. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, but it was uh, that's, again. That's she was just a singer. Trevor Trevor Horn was the man behind it all. Oh, of course. Trevor yeah. Horn, Steve Lipson, JJ Jexalik, those yep. guys. Uh, it was. Well, he's out of noise. It was isn't he? that? He's I mean, it's still it's, it's still. Yeah. Well, it was. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. Uh, Trevor Horn and JJ Jexalik and Dudley. A remix. Yeah. Oh, the oh yeah. Other guy. Annie and uh, Dave. First two albums. Oh yeah. yeah. The first two albums. Touch and and then touch lost and, interest. Um, touch was great. Sweet dreams. Sweet Dreams, yeah. Touch was right. a brilliant album. Touch is their best album. Sweet Absolutely. Sweet Dreams was first, and then Touch. Painter Rumor. Absolutely Rima. stunning album. Listen, yeah. I can still listen to Painter Sorry, here, here comes here comes the rain again. It's my favourite. I just I just love that. That's yeah. my favourite. It's a good yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Well, which yeah, not, is the best uh, getting, album? Getting getting back album. to getting back to Grace Jones quickly before we move on from her. Night Clubbing, I agree with Native VS, is the best album. If you haven't heard Night Clubbing, go listen no, to it. All right. It's really really good. There's a song on there called uh, "Sweet Dreams" is second album. Liberta Listen to the song called "Libertango." You will absolutely fall in love with okay. all the synthy sort of innuendos in that song. It's mm. it's it's a synth fest. Um, it's really really cool. Um, yeah, William Blood uh, is good. Yeah, yeah, Libertango. That's just the one. interesting. So native VS. I'm sure Sweet Dreams comes before Touch. So is 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 Touch the third album then? Is no, there an I, album I thought before Touch Sweet was Dreams? Before. I thought Sweet. I thought Touch was before Sweet Dreams. I'm going to have to look that up now because you. Oh, I've always thought for years and years and years. Uh, you read for me. Yeah, find out because I'm intrigued by that. I've always got I, in my own head Sweet Dreams comes before Touch, but uh, I'm quite happy to be corrected. Uh, there was the English Garden before that. English Garden recorded, right, okay, by Connie Plank. Interesting. Connie Plank was a dude, wasn't he? Died okay, uh, Bush, Debbie, Harry, Annie, Lennox, yeah. You're right, Sweet Dreams are, it was before Touch. Wow. It was the same year, though. Okay. So Sweet In the Garden was right. their first, Sweet Dreams second, Touch third, and then 1984, which I wasn't a huge fan of, uh, I didn't really like 1984. Um, no, neither did I. Um, <laughs> Love is a Stranger. I that, bought it. Love is a Stranger is probably one of my favourite songs that she ever did or they ever did. That's a great song. I used to like, like, uh, is it, I like to listen to Beethoven. Yeah. I used to listen to Mozart. Of course. So, and Bach. Mo Mozart and Bach were my two go tos. I, I was ne never really a massive fan of Beethoven. What do you but think? I, but I do like I do like some <gasps> shame of, on your runs. I do like some of his his things, some of them, not all, but some. Uh, yeah, and, oh, no. um, probably oh, one Beethoven symphony is um, worth oh. all of Mozart's. Probably yeah. shoot me down dead now. No, ah, probably Bach. We just said Brooksy. Bach would be my favourite. Bach, and then uh, I yeah. do like. I don't mind Vivaldi either. Vivaldi's pretty cool. That's it, Vivaldi. Oh, that's, that's, that's my uh, Four Seasons. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, Four Seasons, the um, you know the the famous one, but he did other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. But uh, yeah. So, what was your favourite Kate Bush album? Uh, Wuthering, a, uh, uh, Wuthering Heights. Hounds of Love. I know it's a cliche, but Hounds of yeah, Love is a masterpiece. Uh, and then this sensual world can make me cry. Mm. Sensual world. Yeah, I like the red yeah. shoes. Inky's just yes, so do I. Joined us late. I just Jeez, you're late. Inky. I just two and a half know. hours late. Hi, Inky. <laughs> <laughs> Two now, and a half hours late. It's just Kate Bush. Yeah. Uh, oh, which one Kate Bush, great. Absolute genius. Yeah, the first Eurythmics album, I just closed the tab oh, yeah. off, actually. Got, go back to that first. Shoes that one. That uh, first Eurythmics yeah, album. There go. Um, go back to that first Eurythmics album for a sec. In the Garden, right? In the Garden. They recorded that in right. Dave's, in Dave's um, house, yeah, Dave yeah. Stewart's house. Yeah. On a, uh, I don't know if it was a Tascam. A late uh, yeah, eight track. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. that's the eight track. I absolutely. If you ever seen interviews with them, I absolutely love the stories of how they got themselves. You know, they took a while, but I, yeah, how they got themselves out. I think it was just so so. It's you know, it's mm. it's a real battler's story, isn't it? It's a real battler's story of how they got themselves out there, and and obviously they ended up being one of the most successful UK artists ever. 
So it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, the, a lot of these things we've got to we've we've got to talk about them because they're influences in our in you know what we do as music is is a soup of all those influences. You know, and sometimes we we don't sip the whole soup together. We sip a bit of it. You know, that might influence a little bit of that track mm -hmm. or that. That's that's how that's why we talk about it because um, if you guys are watching this thinking what's this got to do with synths and stuff like that it's got a hell of a lot to do with it because you your purchase decision Star Wars. of your synths yeah <laughs> what you're buying what you're playing how you're how you're arranging your music all of that is completely influenced by these these artists that you listen to when you're younger absolutely or even today even artists today that you're listening to um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think we've already mentioned heavy metal, but see, I, th I think Beethoven was, was like full on heavy metal for his day. And a, a, a proper revolutionary, he ripped up the rule book. He said, nah, bugger you lot, I'm doing it for myself. No, I'm not kowtowing to the aristocracy or the church. I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> and, and that's why he died a pauper. But um, Native VS everybody in Vienna Gabriel. turned out for his... Peter Gabriel, absolutely. Of course, we've got to mention Peter Gabriel. Peter well, we mentioned Gabriel Genesis, didn't we? We mentioned essential. Genesis. Uh, yeah, I, look, I, just, uh, I, I can't help it. I just so it was. It was. Peter, um, Peter Gabriel, it was. It was Peter amazing. Gabriel, Mike Rutherford, obviously. Peter Phil Gabriel, Collins. three and four. Um, who was the other guy? Steve. Steve. Steve Hillage. Um, Hillage. Steve Hillage. Steve Hillage. I can't think of his name. Ah, Steve Hillage. It was Steve Hillage. Pretty sure it's Steve Hillage. Right. We yeah, see the uh, so. he was the bass guy. Correct as if we're wrong. We see the bass guitarist. Uh, no, that was um, Peter Gabriel. He was the bass guitarist. No, uh, um, I don't know. Hack Steve uh, Hackett. <laughs> Steve Hackett. That's it. Steve Hackett. Steve <laughs> got, Hillage. Yeah. Steve Hillage was uh, Steve one. Hackett. <laughs> no, it was it was Steve Hackett. Hillage was in. I thought it was something else. Steve was wasn't he in? He wasn't oh, in King Crimson. He was certainly. I don't know. It was in, he went on to be. It was he had. He did have something to do with the orb, but he, he Steve Hillage was I definitely just, Tony Banks. A, Tony one of the Banks. prog rock could, guys. Tony Banks is the Tony Banks. Banks. We could not remember Tony Banks without Tony Banks. There wouldn't <laughs> have been some of those amazing yeah, tracks. System Seven, like Home by the Sea. Yeah, that's it. Mark, Home he was in Gong. Sea. Yeah, Steve Hillage was in Gong, and then he went on to form System Seven. Go listen to Home by the Sea. French. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go listen, go listen to Genesis Home mm. by the Sea. If you've never, guys watching this right now, you've never heard of Genesis or you've heard of Genesis but you haven't heard their music properly, go listen to Home by the Sea and then Second Home by the Sea. And it's, and it's all prog rock based, you know, what was it, late great. 70s or early 80s? I can't remember when that. That album, Abacab, is actually a great album that they brought out. Such a good album. Uh, I, I, I was. Have you like, noticed yeah. something that we've not mentioned really any of the newer stuff because it's all the good stuff that was that's now, you know, in the past. Yeah, but Phil, when he went on his solo thing, he he wrote some amazing songs. Like they yeah. they were like you know it made him a millionaire. That you know, multi millionaire. Those songs that he wrote. I mean, I'm not. It might not be our cup of tea. Those that sort of poppy sort of stuff. Um, and some of them I liked, but. I mean, I definitely like in the air tonight. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to that. Um, but yeah, those some of the some of the tracks he made him lots and lots of money. He does he did concerts up until you know what is it 2012 or whatever? He stopped. He stopped doing it now because he's getting on. But um, you no, know. I was I was meaning actually in the 20s, 2020s type thing. Well, 2018, 19. 20. We're not talking about anything we at all that's up. current. Oh, what's okay. the most what's the most right. recent album that you bought? Yeah. What's the most what's the most current music that you own? I, I can tell you I can tell you yeah. dead simple. The most current album that I bought was uh uh John Hopkins. Um God, I forgot the name of it now. Emerald Rush. No, that's a track on it. Well John Hopkins Synchrony no John Hopkins. This oh, is what's what, he called that album? This is what <laughs> Andy, this is this is kind of why I'm I was saying what I was saying earlier about music. The stuff that I'm buying now is off Bandcamp and uh, no, it's <laughs> new. Like like we we had Chelsea on a few weeks ago. I've bought her hmm. stuff off Bandcamp. Um, yeah, oh, I, I, don't, really, oh, I downloaded really Pope's it. album, didn't I? I I, I, yep. I, I bought I Pope's. bought inverted Pope's album. 
Um, yeah, his his stuff's good. And he's gonna. Yeah. I haven't got. I I will get to him. I will. I am gonna get it. I haven't. Got, I do like his his stuff. It's really good. See this. See the thing is, if you were talking about famous people, um, to me, I f I feel these people are famous. They're famous to me, but they're not famous to the world, um, because they they're not getting that mainstream radio airplay. No one would play it on the radio because you'd get all these people raging about, whoa, what's this drivel? But they don't understand that like true the true musicians are really out there and they're scrapping together as hard as they can with that you know second jobs third jobs that that's the that's the truth mm -hmm. of the music industry right now and um and I am absolutely behind every single one of you guys out there that you know are good musicians just keep keep punching your stuff out that's what I say keep making tracks keep doing sound design and keep Keep that sort of stuff up. That's what it's all about. That's what I'm saying. Like you, mm. you can't really sort of name big names. I, I mean, I have got some stuff that I've bought in the last five, ten years that are big names, but I'm almost kind of embarrassed to say it. But um, <laughs> Callum um, and Oak. Well, I bought I bought the John Mich John Michelle Jar <laughs> Electronica, the Jewel. Yeah. Well, how long ago was that? That was probably about five years ago. I bought those. Um, they weren't the greatest. It's not his greatest work. That's for sure. I did enjoy. Mm. I, look, I, what I enjoyed was when it's he not the collaboration. Yeah, so I enjoyed it when he. Right. I enjoyed the track he did with Gary New, Gary Newman. I thought that was awesome. That one he did with Gary Newman, and I also enjoyed the um, uh, the uh, well, Tangerine Dream. One was it was pretty good. Yeah. So there was a couple actually, of tracks in there. You mentioned Gary good. Newman. You see, mm. uh, the, actually, the most recent. My, actually, I lied about the John Hopkins because I, I bought Savage by Gary Newman after I bought the the and the, the the John Hopkins was called Singularity. That's a great album, actually. Anybody, if you if you've not heard it, well, uh, Gary Newman, Savage, absolute brilliant, proper return to form that was yeah. really fantastic. I think he might have put another album out since. But I'm not so sure. So, so this is where it gets tricky, right? I've I've listened to that whole album because I've got Spotify. Okay, mm -hmm. so I haven't bought it, but I've streamed it, and that, and that's kind of the sad thing, in a way. But it's also well, you helped him make thirty six quid. <laughs> yeah, he's a little hinge <laughs> about that. But that's but yeah. I mean that that's, a million plays and thirty six pounds. That's I mean, why. <laughs> that's why a lot of us haven't like we when you said that question. Oh, what have you bought lately in the last few years, twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. A lot of us have listened to an absolute stack of stuff on Spotify or, or those, you know, Apple tunes or whatever, but we haven't probably, you know, dropped money on on albums, physical or, you know, digital downloads or anything. Yeah. That's kind I, of that's the sad. I, thing. I have to say, I, well, have, I haven't. I don't listen to Spot. I, I don't I, listen I to anything on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Me neither. I, I don't have it. Do buy. I, I slightly object. I but... do buy the album. I, I bought the last album. I bought physical CD was Orbital's uh, Monsters album and the last album I bought actually as a download will be the Thrill Seekers Hydra but I, and I sort of got a big variety of people that I know and I'll buy that album just by listening I'll, you know I'll, I'll actually buy that album I won't stream it and listen to it on Spotify because I sort of usually expect to like it Mm. And sometimes that's a good in a way because you mm. sort of grow to like it. Because if you listen to, I've found this quite a few times because I listen to music going to work and stuff in the car. And sometimes you don't necessarily like the whole album, but after you've listened to it three or four times, you grow to like the whole album. It becomes, you know, it becomes like, oh, I actually like these tracks now. And before mm. I only liked, you know, people mm. will stream or have a quick look at one, two tracks and they'll just pick out the favorite tracks. But if they buy the album and listen to it over again a few times, yep. they grow to like the yeah. album. That's where maybe miss out people just buying the, the track that sounds good in the first 10 seconds and without listening to it a couple of times you don't get that you know that that vibe so I, I know the first person who bought a physical cd off of me actually you you, you guys i'm not going to tell you who it is but you guys know who he is i'll say that much um and it's not you darren and because you didn't buy yours um but I know I was a special privilege. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? I remember the first person that bought an album f off of Bandcamp from from mine, and I, I just I just I like that whole thing. I think someone in chat. I think it was uh, I think it was Wagoo. 
if you've actually fallen in love, this is what he's saying, if you've fallen in love with an artist and become a fan, it's actually a cool thing to go and buy their physical stuff off of their Bandcamp page. It's actually a cool thing because mm. you know, it's in, it's not, you, yeah, it's you not making a million of dollars. Them, whether but, you do or not. Yeah, well, so, but you do feel. You're supporting them in a way. Um, I do like that. I like. I st I'm. I'm still because I'm older and things, but I still like that physical having that physical CD. Uh, so Darren, when you do yours, I want you know. I definitely want you to it's make ownership. an effort to try and do CDs or vinyl versions well, of what, what you're doing. I'm hoping. I'm hoping when I do the CD uh, part of it, it'll be worth buying a CD or mm. getting CD because I don't know whether I'm going to be selling it, but it'll be worth it because there'll be information on all the tracks that i've done because each of the track names has got meaning and there'll be information about that track and possibly information of how that track was written and things mm. used in it as well as well as the actual name of the track because things like pan star which is actually a telescope which tracks um some of the some of the names of the like porn aniana was um one of the furthest black holes i think uh that uh was spotted and like pan star is a telescope is it? so things like that it's all meanings to all the tracks so that i'm going to hopefully put into an actual pull out sleeve so you have a pull out sleeve and actually have like kate bush's thing here so there'll be actually information mm. on it and hopefully a poster for it all spread out i did that's I, the plan i did Where that i mean proper i didn't do for it i didn't do the proper foldy sleeve but i actually did spend time doing the art making two sides to the sleeve and the back cover artwork as well. Yeah, it's great. Um, and, and, and I actually enjoyed doing it because um, I knew that whoever would buy it would, would get what I was, you know, what I was talking about. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, Human Error is saying, the only downside to having over 7,000 vinyl records is space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of think it's cool knowing that you've got 7,000 vinyl records. I mean, God, that's a lot. That's a massive amount. Um, that would, I reckon that would make some record stores feel inadequate knowing that. I reckon there'd be record stores all over the world that wouldn't even have anywhere near that amount for sale. Um, but yeah, support, got, support your artists. I've got but I have got, got a fair, I've got, I've got about thousand can everyone put their band camp in url in the comments below well unfortunately unless you're a moderator uh you can't paste links in but why don't you jump on to discord if you don't have discord maybe it's a good opportunity for you to get discord because you can actually put your um, links into there let's show the discord link there it is go into discord there's no cost to being on Discord, then you can chuck chuck your link into Bandcamp and everyone will be there's actually a, a room in, in in the Discord server where people can share their um uh, members music it's called. Hashtag members music and you can go in and share your own music. And in fact, speaking of music, if you actually want to check out some music of late, uh, JX3D's got some stuff that you can go and listen to in there. And actually, I need to get that on and show you guys. I just uh, need to double check with him to make sure he's happy with that first, though. But he's he's recently posted in the Discord uh, channel some stuff that he's done, and it is really good, really, really, really good. Like, yeah, all the synth guys will like it. Uh, so, Paul, jump into Discord. And uh, I think we'll probably wrap it up, guys. I think we've done that to death. Uh, JX3D said, just do it. Okay, next next show, I'll definitely showcase his stuff next show. And we haven't got time for today. Um, but yeah, um, good thing about, like I said, good thing about Discord is it'll let people paste links. It'll let people um, click on them. It's it's just handy. It's a handy thing. And you can't do that in YouTube chat. I've, it's just one of those things. Uh, moderators can, like people like Inky and Darren and Inverted Popes and JX3D. Why are they moderators? Well, some of them are Patreon supporters and some of them have been long like guests on the show forever. Big thanks, Wigu, for the five pounder that's just come through. And um, yeah, uh, Darren, you've already mentioned your, your album. Anything else you want to 
say? I mean, you said you're going to be doing a track in about four hours. So that's tomorrow? Yeah, no, uh, no, no nothing to mention on the album, though. That'll, that'll be quiet for a little bit while I finish things and do do what I have to do and things. Uh, so I will say no more on that okay. so I won't bore people. Uh, yes, tomorrow, um, yeah, well, I've got to write a track, so I won't start it till tomorrow at 11, 11 o'clock-ish. I don't know, so I don't know what it'll be. <laughs> you'll, you'll know when it comes up. You'll know the same as I will, so I haven't got a clue. Well, I'll be looking forward to it. And Andy, what have you got to announce? Anything? Are you going to be... Uh... Oh, the the only plans are to actually they mentioned about Bandcamp now. Having downloaded um, Inverted Popes' album, it got me thinking more about Bandcamp, and I haven't set one up yet, but I I really think I should. And I've got I've got loads and loads of if you, I mean you call it man, back catalogue sounds pretentious old tracks, which I've actually been listening to. You know, listening back, a lot of them are drivel. Well, there's there's a few, which I think are really good and deserve to hear the, you know, yeah, be, you be heard know. more or see the light see the light of day. So to do some, I mean, they're all cassette recordings which I've digitised, but to to spend some time playing about with them. Now, when I've got the new computer set up, I might actually think about investing. I mean, we talked a little bit last week about um, potential sort of sort of mastering software or things that you can use just to to clean things up a bit. Uh, and I'm thinking of, of of spending some time doing that uh, with the with the idea of of sticking up so like sticking it up on Bandcamp, mm. and people can download it for free. I'm not asking for for any money for for those things, but I think I'm, I might get on with doing that this week. Okay. And I uh, did mention just before we go that I am going to show you a little sneak peek of the emojis that I've been doing. Um, <laughs> And this is going to be. Oh, I'm going. To, I'm going to roll with it. Who cares? Uh, where are we? What we'll do is we'll do the synth at the screen emoji. We'll do that one first. So this is this is going to be low res, okay? But this is what it's going to look like. And obviously, it'll be a tiny little sort of emoji thing, like you can see the face in the chat below. <laughs> There's the synth at the screen emoji. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you the rest because I've done a couple more. Um, there's only five that I'm allowed to do it for the start anyway. But it'll be it'll be fun. I think we, we're going to have some fun with this. And uh, so hopefully between now and next week there'll be a there'll be a join button on YouTube and you'll be able to use those. <coughs> and you know there's gonna be some bullshit around that. But anyway, I um, I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, and it's been awesome having you here. And we'll see you guys next week. And hopefully next week's subject will be arpeggiators or pattern generators if you want to call it that and uh on that note everyone say goodbye see you later hit the button bye bye, bye, -bye soon, folks. take care drop